Okay. Oh, I'm peeking a little bit, I think. But... <sighs> Let's go. Uh, also, happy Saturday. the trip home. Okay, so yeah, someone is hunting us. We were ambushed in the subway. Um, Paul showed us a, a bunch of information on that scarred orc dude. Oh, I forgot his name already. Watch that DVD, right? The third DVD. Wait, we have three DVDs? Sure. Green Winters. I, uh, I was thinking about Adrian today. Not as he was when he disappeared, not as the fabled dragon slayer or the big time CEO of Dial Defense. I was thinking about when we were kids. Well, I was always more of a kid than he was, of course. He's 15 years older than me. In a way, he was more like a parent than a brother. So I was thinking about the time when we were on holiday. Our parents took us to the uh, island of Pole to enjoy the beach. I must have been about five years old. Adrian was 20. It'd be his last family vacation with us. A year later, he'd begin his meteoric rise to fame and fortune. But on this trip, he was my brother. And when I fell out of the paddle boat that our parents rented and started sinking fast into the Baltic, he was the one who dove in to rescue me. You saved my life that day, Adrian. I'll love you forever for that. And I will find you. I owe you that much. found an old news article that mentions Adrian from way back in 2036. It was printed in a financial magazine called Das Finanzwesen. I don't know, sorry. One of those chic print-based mags that produced, uh, that they produced for the retro crowd. There aren't any clues in there, but it's good to see someone else acknowledge his existence. SK stock suffers in a post-buyout brain drain. In the aftermath of the Dragon Loafwear's hostile takeover of Seder Croup. Schwerin Duster Gesellschaft. I don't, I don't freaking. How do you say words that long, German people? A continuing brain drain of high level executives is causing ongoing worry among company shareholders. The company's stock took a major hit when Loafwear deposed former CEO. Wilhelmina Graf Benoit, Benoit last August. Three months later, long-held posi power positions within the SKI Empire continued to empty as the dragon consolidates his power base. The most recent casualties of Loafwear's takeover include Alexandra Kobayashi, former s s chief operating officer of Seder Munitions, Mothaus Donor, Donner, former treasurer of Ruhr Datafax, and Werner Harding, former CEO of Deal Defense. Harding stepped into the role to replace Dr. Adrian Vauclair, who disappeared under mysterious circumstances two years ago. So there you have it. That's what they had to say about Adrian a mere two years after his disappearance. My brother, the footnote. Okay, more corrupted. More corrupted. Dr. Vauclair, it is my sad duty to inform you that by unanimous vote of the... That your position as CEO of Deal Defense will be terminated at the end of this calendar month. Your continued misallocation of company funds to pursue personal agendas cannot and will not be tolerated any longer. The supervisory board is not unsympathetic to your mental state, 
The trauma that you endured during your pursuit of the dragon Firewing must have been enormous, but your continuing obsession with the dragon, the dead dragon I might add, has proven a negative influence on this company and an unjustified drain on company resources. The board wishes you all the best in your future endeavors. We have prepared a generous severance package to assist you in this time of transition. If there is anything more that we can do to help you, please don't hesitate to ask. Alright. I don't know if we're supposed to have that third DVD yet. But I'm good with that. Let's see what jobs we have. Oh yeah, we need payment. Sweet. To call your work unsatisfactory would be an understatement. When I said we wanted the prototype, it should have gone without saying we wanted it intact and operational. You technically fulfilled the terms of our arrangement, so you will get paid, but don't ever expect to work for us again. Sweet. So we still got the money. Uh, we have the horrible pharma cleanup job. We are pretty close, actually, though. I think that might give us all the money that we need to... No, I'm not depositing money from my wallet. That's mine. Okay, yeah, we did sell it. Well, come on, that's so cheap. We could have got more for that. Formula 17. Okay, I'm not actually going to read these. Probably missing some lore or whatever, but. Uh, do we have anything to do right now? Oh, yeah, Frau Mueller. So we don't necessarily need to do that pharma job. I forgot that the Frau has been waiting for us. statue, right? Hello, Frau Mueller. Second comes the frozen cobblestones of the empty park, Frau Mueller looks entirely out of place. She suppresses a shiver and hugs herself for warmth. She appears as Amsel described her, an impressive looking woman of Aslanter, as Tlanner, a descent with coffee colored skin and dark wavy hair. Everything about her screams corporate executive, from her expensive looking suit to her tastefully understated makeup. She is obviously nervous, but she's hiding it well. She locks eyes with you and hesitates only slightly before speaking. Mm, Jack the Rigger, I presume. Air Amsel told me I could meet you here. Uh, yeah, you have a job. Yes, yes, I do have a job. In truth, I'm in desperate need of your help. Why, whatever do you mean? Hm, an assumed name, obviously. But I have been told that this is how you people do business. From my accent, you've no doubt inferred I'm an Aztlaner. Further, you may have guessed who I work for. 
Uh, no, I'm an idiot and don't know. Yeah, you, you tell me. Why, as technology, the only Aztlan based corporation operating in Germany. I've been with the company for over a decade. Over the course of my employment, I've worked on a great many projects, from the innocuous to the obscene. My hands have touched it all. Never once did I question the wisdom of our research. Never once did I consider blowing the whistle on my employers. I kept my nose down, worked hard, and excelled at the tasks set before me. Um, go on. But last month, I was transferred here from my home in Tenochtitlan, and they told me an employee of my caliber was needed here in Berlin, and that I would be working on a project with wide-reaching applications. The only other detail I was given was the name of the project, Bloodline. Uh, catchy, sure. Okay, so she's, she's scurred. I've seen many terrible things in my life, Jack the Rigger. In Tanakhtitlin, blood magic is commonplace. Take a moment to imagine what that means. In the underground markets, people are bought and sold as chattel. Street children are rounded up and bled like lambs. I witnessed all these things by the age of twelve. Seeing such things, it changes you, makes you numb. But what I found when I arrived here was worse. This project, it horrifies me, Jack, and it must be stopped. Um, spilled beans, lady. Mm -hmm. The less you know, the better for both of us. You'll just have to trust me on that. You need only know that it is evil, and that it is not a word, and that is not a word that I use lightly. Um. Sure, if you won't tell me what it is, how am I supposed to stop it? Simple. I want you to bring the building down. What? Hey, Ace. And good morning. Bring the building down. The computers, the research data, the mages and scientists that are working to bring about this abomination. I want all of them burned to ash and buried in rubble. No compromises, no exceptions. I'm sure you have unanswered questions. I'm not in the habit of dealing with shadow runners. In truth, I've spent the majority of my career living in fear of you people. But I do know that you're the only ones who can get this done. So tell me, Jack, is there anything more that you need to hear from me? Or are you ready to make a decision? Oh, oh, Ace, did you play Dying Light with, um, that... that person? How'd that go? Cool. Doing, uh, fun or just playing through, like, the normal campaign? You guys do the, the prison escape thing? Okay. Well, cool. Oh, jeez. Oh, okay. Fun. Oh. I normally just disable those. Uh, let's see. Let's ask her about surely not everyone in the building is bad. What about if there's like janitors in the building? None of us are innocent, Jack. 
But if you need to salve your conscience, rest assured that at the hour of your approach, the only personnel authorized to be on site will be security and senior members of the research team. And I assure you, neither are innocent in this matter. If the Bloodline Project reaches completion, nobody will be safe ever again. This sounds like hyperbole, I know, but it isn't. The Bloodline Project will lead to countless deaths. I'm certain enough of this to hire you, despite the fact that doing so will probably cost me my own life. Um. Yeah, why couldn't you tell Polly? Why, well, I had to meet you in person, to look you in your eyes and see the man behind the name. Now that I've done so, I'm sure you are the one that I need. Naturally, I will send any further information about the job to Aramsel, provided, of course, that you accept. How do you want me to blow it up? Oh. All you'll need is a competent decker. The facility is powered by a number of on-site generators. There are safeguards in place to prevent them from overloading. In the event of a power spike, the system is designed to shut itself down. But I know how you can disable those safeguards. Once the generators begin to overload, you'll have a limited time to reach a safe distance. The explosion will be quite catastrophic. And what about building security? I expect it to be tight. In addition to their standard security team, as technology has taken out a night-errant high-threat response team contract to protect the building. Corporate doesn't seem to mind contracting a competitor for emergency response services. That should give you some indication as to the uniqueness of this project. At any rate, I believe I've come up with a solution to the Knight Errant problem. I'll discuss the matter with your Herr Amsel if you decide to take the job. And how much are you paying, lady? 36,000 new yen, as I told Herr Amsel. That's what I have allocated for the job. So we have two jobs to take. I think either one will get us to the amount of money that we need. We can either do this job and blow up a whole building without knowing why, really, besides it's evil. Or we could do that weird... Um, pharma job that we have in our inbox that seems pretty unethical. Uh, so I'll take this. It would be good to have more information, but I believe her. In that case, it's a deal. I can't tell you how relieved I am, Jack. Thank you for helping me to bring this nightmare to an end. I'll iron out the remaining details with your Aramsel. He'll want to talk this over with you anyway, I'm sure. You're a good man, Jack. You're saving more lives than you know. Uh, so I am believing her. She seemed genuine. Uh, her emotional reactions as described. But it could just be that she is maybe not even from S Technology. Maybe she's from a competing company and just wants that building blown up because it's a competitor and that's going to be an important project or something. I don't know. So, I mean, she could be lying to us, but I'll believe her. So I guess we need to go talk to Paul again. Hey, Polly. Oh, let's, uh, do our skills. Uh, heck yeah, we need more drill and combat. Oh, so that's why we had three APs. Because we have that, um, we're wearing an outfit that gives us plus one drone combat. Okay, so right now when we select this, we aren't actually getting this. We already have that. We're getting this. Which is 
pretty sweet. But I want class S drones. What is our charisma? I would actually like one more charisma. Ugh. Yeah, let's get it. Corporate. And that's, I think, where I'll leave our charisma. Um, and we'll just put everything else as we're able to into intelligence and drones. Well, we could probably use some more willpower, but I'll leave that. So we're taking Blitz with us. Oh, he's strapped for cash. Why are you strapped for cash? What can I say, Chief? I have expensive tastes. All right. I was hoping for a straight answer. And you're annoyingly persistent. If you must know, I'm in debt. That's where all the money's going. In debt? To whom? No offense, but this is a little personal, Chief. My debts are none of your business. Yeah, come on, it is my business. Some bookie sends the thugs here looking for you. It's gonna become my business. Hey, alright, fine. First off, you don't need to worry about anyone coming after me. My debts are to a bunch of old contacts. If I don't pay them, I'm gonna lose them. In this line of work, that isn't a smart thing to do. Second, before you ask, those debts are for services rendered. I was in a tight spot. I needed some help and I threw around a lot of IOUs to get it. Third and finally, the trouble I was involved in, oh, the trouble I was in involved a girl. I'll tell you about it if you ask me to, but we're verging deep into personal feelings territory. So if you don't want to hear me uh, sob over my ex-girlfriend, you'll drop the subject. So it's up to you, Chief. You really want to do this? Or shall we keep this professional? Yeah, go ahead, tell me. Spill the tea. Alright, where to begin? I met Emily at Drogan Kippa. She was the first person who was ever more important to me than myself. I was crazy about her, Chief. To this day, she's the only person I've ever met who could outdeck me. And the real kicker? She wasn't even a decker by trade. There was nothing she wasn't good at. I like to dabble in rigging, but Emily, that girl could pick up anything that she set her mind to. Sounds like a hell of a girl. She was. She just, she made things right. No matter how stupid I was, no matter what I got myself into, she made it right. I don't think much of many people, Chief. Emotional attachments, they ain't really my thing. Love seems like a diluted word these days, so I won't waste it on Emily. Let's just say she was important to me. And then I lost her. I didn't know what was happening. It came out of nowhere. One day, she was just gone, along with most of my decking gear. The only explanation was a handwritten note on old-fashioned paper. Leave me alone. That was it. We'd been together for years, and that was all she left me. That and this beat-up old cyberdeck. Naturally, I freaked. We had our share of arguments, 
but we'd never had a huge blowout or anything. I couldn't think of anything that drive her to do a thing like that. Mostly, I felt hurt, so I searched for her in the real world and in the Matrix. And when that turned up nothing, I started tapping my contacts. And that was when I started racking up debt. Did you find her? No, she's gone, Jack, without a trace. I looked high, I looked low, I poked into everything I could think of, and my contacts did the same. She's gone, Chief. At this point, I've accepted that, but I still have to repay those debts. Um, hmm. I wish that this first reply was a little bit more tactful. Like, mm, accusing him of giving up on her seems like a real shitty thing to do. But, but maybe we can get, maybe we can help find her. I don't know. I'm going with it. I don't know, Jack. I really did look everywhere, and at a great personal cost. Yeah, you should you should keep keep looking. Yeah, yeah, you might be right. Fuck, I thought I was done with this, but you're right. Without some kind of closure, I'm never gonna be at peace. Thanks for the talk, Chief. I'll let you know how it goes. But <laughs> please don't. Uh, yeah, do that. Good luck, Blitz. Take him on the job, make sure he gets a fat cut of that money. How you doing, Deep? Uh, nothing new. Nothing new. How about you, Ag? Hmm. Okay. No new dialogue? No new dialogue. Oh yeah, how uh how you doing after that last run? That must have been pretty pretty tough killing killing that dude. Or I guess we didn't kill him, I guess we enabled him to kill himself. He ripped his head off. Jack Look at me. I'm... I'm not far from being what that poor troll was. When I think of what they did to him. It wasn't right. And you did the only thing that you could to make it better. You knew that it would cost you, and you did it anyway because it was right. I won't forget that, Jack. Not ever. Yeah, I would still like to know more about your chrome... Oh, she's gonna tell me now. Yeah, let's go back. Let's go way back. But why do you care? I'm the leader of this team, and I need to know as much as I can about the runners who are working with me. Alright, fine. We can talk, but we're doing it on my terms. This is a long story, Jack. Long and ugly and cruel. Are you sure you want to hear this? Go for it. Alright, I'm going to start at the beginning. Not for you, for me. I guess that it might help me say all of this out loud. My family lived in Stuttgart. It was a nice enough place, I suppose. My parents worked as wage slaves for IFMU. My mom was a good person. Once upon a time, my father was a decent person as well. That's what my mom always told me, at least. But I never knew him anyway. The dad I knew was an old, damaged Eurowar vet who turned to hardline religion to make sense of the world. 
in Stuttgart that meant either the Ritter Christi or their fascist cousins, the Kruzritters. My father chose the latter path. I still remember hiding in my room when my father had his KZ brothers over for prayer group. They would drink and get rowdy, then spend an hour or two riling themselves up with talk about heretics and the devil's work. Then they'd go out and find some poor elf or dwarf, stomp the living shit out of him, and drown him in the Nekar. Meanwhile, I'd be holed up at home with Mom, who would commemorate the event by drinking a bottle of wine and crying herself to sleep. Just elves and dwarves? What, you mean pick a victim who could fight back? <laughs> no. My father and his pack of jackals weren't up for that kind of trouble. They had more than enough of real combat when they were young men back in the Euro Wars. They just wanted to feel big and in control of their lives again, and it didn't matter to them who they hurt in the process. Anyway, aside from the fact that my dad and his buddies were a bunch of murderous assholes, Life was pretty normal. I went to school, made friends, hung out with my mom. You know, kid stuff. When I turned 14, everything went to shit. On second hand, I don't want to talk about this anymore. Um, yeah, I think it's good for you. It's good for you. Yes, it is. But I'm not going to be able to get through this in one sitting. You need to understand that. Let's get back to the job at hand, shall we? Okay, okay. Cool, we're not gonna push, but we got some more deets. We're a little bit further into their backstory. Maybe, maybe we can get like a personal quest from her. That'd be cool. Uh, let's see if we can get any more out of Agar. What are your thoughts on the last run? Well, I'm not gonna lie, Jack. This one is gonna stick with me for a while. What they did to that troll was sick. This is probably gonna surprise you, but I'm happy that the Mark VI is dead. Yeah, Schmidt was pissed, and sure, our reputation got dinged. Neither of those are good things. But I'll take them over being a part of what they were doing to that troll any day. Walking out of a run with a clean conscience is a rare pleasure. Savor it while you can. Um, a little bit off topic, but do you trust me, Iger? Hmm? Yeah, I suppose I do. You've earned that much. I haven't always agreed with your decisions, Jack, but you've proven your competence. It's only fair for me to acknowledge it. Then spill the beans about your team. This again? Why do you even care, Jack? Because it's pretty clear that if you had your way, you'd still be with them. And a good leader places a priority on knowing every detail about his team. Well, alright, I'll tell you. I suppose you deserve to know. What happened to us was Hoffman. He was a rookie. The kid of some big money corporate exec. He looked good on paper, and he made it through KSK training, so he was basically qualified to join a team. But he was way too green to fit in with ours. Still, he wanted to be a hero, and his family had enough clout to get him an assignment of his choosing. I don't know how many strings Hoffman's daddy had to pull to get him assigned to our team, but he pulled them. Hoffman became our ninth squad mate, despite Metzger's uh, objections. Anyway, flash forward a few weeks. We were closing in on one of them Russian mob major trafficking operations. They'd been using a series of warehouses 50 miles from the border as a staging area for their convoys. Women and girls from Eastern Europe were being housed there. 
When the convoys came, they'd be crammed into cargo containers and hauled across the border into Germany. Go to any brothel along the border and have a look around. Chances are, at least a few of the girls who spend some time in those warehouses are there. Slovakians, Hungarians, Poles, you name it. The mob has been smuggling them over for decades. But we were in a position to derail their whole operation, and we weren't going to get it to let our new addition slow us down. We hit them by surprise, and we hit them hard. Fisher and Braun managed to take down the Banshee that they had patrolling the site. Wolf had reconnaissance drones overhead, providing battle tack feeds to the rest of us, and we picked off their gunmen one by one. They had numbers on us, but they didn't know where to hit us. We had eyes in the sky, we had cover and concealment. Every time they thought they had a fix on us, we'd shift positions and hit them again. They might as well have been fighting ghosts. And then Hoffman broke cover and gave away our position. He yelled, Leroy Jenkins, and ran out. After that, all hell broke loose. Wolf went down first. The sound of it will haunt me for the rest of my days. An explosion, a choked scream, and then his long, drawn-out, gurgling sound. When he died, his drones went down with him, and there were too many hostiles to track without him. I'll spare you the gory details, Jack. Suffice it to say that my team was wiped out. I watched Metzger die. I took three rounds myself. I had to drag myself back across the older Nassau line into Germany. I almost died. So that's the story. My KSK career died with the rest of the team. Our mission was illegal after all. Off the books. There was no going back for me. So I wound up here. I tell you everything you ever wanted to know, fearless leader. Are you satisfied now? Uh, so, so you, so tell me, what's your takeaway from my tale of woe? I figure you've got to have one. Yeah, you blamed me because you thought I was a Hoffman, but I'm not. Yeah, I know that. And you're right, to a point. I might have judged you harsh, harshly because of Hoffman. But everyone else that I said was justified. Giving you command of this team was a hasty decision made for the wrong reasons. I stand by that assessment. But between then and now, I've been watching you like a hawk. And you groan, Jack. You weren't the right choice to lead before. I still believe that. But you are now. Oh, sweet. Later. Okay, so... Let's... Oh, oh, Paul. Paul, 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 Paul. What's up? What's up, dog? Oh, wait, wait, wait. The dog. I almost forgot to pet the dog. That would be a crime. Welcome back, Jack the Rigger. How did the meeting with Frau Mueller go? I took it. Yes, a few. Frau Mueller has provided us with detailed information on the facility. I vetted the information and it seems to hold up. Based on this intel, I've formulated what I believe will be an effective strategy to bring down the building. According to Mueller's intel, the facility is extraordinarily well guarded. Whatever this bloodline project is, the Azias have spared no offense, no, no expense to defend it. The facility is patrolled by AS Technology's internal security personnel. On their own, they would pose a challenge, but I don't doubt that you could brute force your way through them. Unfortunately, they will not be on their own. AS Technology has purchased one of the Night Errant's more expensive security contracts as an additional line of defense. Uh, so kicking the front doors out, then. I should say so. I have pulled some strings with an old contact of mine, and he's provided me with the address of a small software developer, OTK International. They write the firmware updates for Knight Errant's comm systems, and their defenses should be considerably weaker than as technologies. My contact has informed me that OTK stores are 
an off-site hard copy of every firmware update it develops for data security purposes. My suggestion is this. You hit the offices of OTK International and reduce their computers to slag. In the interim, I will have the hard copy of their next update replaced with a compromised version. When OTK's next update goes live, our compromised version will be pushed out to Knight Errant. When you hit the technology facility, you'll be able to track Knight Errant via their comlinks. This should make the run much more manageable. That will get you through the front door of the office that contains OTK International. My contact was only able to provide me with the one card, so you'll need to let the rest of your team in through a side door. Yeah, sounds like a plan. Um, hmm. So on this job, I don't think that we'll take Blitz, because we'll take him on the next one. Hopefully that don't uh, bite us in the bum. Oh, how am I doing for equipment? Oh, pretty darn good, except I have no, um, no reses. Um, where the heck is the... who's the doctor here? Oh, it's that sketchy, um, guy who made a deal with the ghouls. Where, where was his office? Is it up here? Yeah. What's up, dude? Yeah, I need medical supplies. Give me a couple of these. Thank you. Oh, I guess I should have only bought one. I uh, would love some cyberware. Let's see. Like the cyber light? That looks great. Hmm. Sorry I have a normal... Oh yeah, we're saving up the encephalon. data jack as well. So we could spend all of our money on an Cephalon next and an I data jack. Double check. What does um, intelligence do for us again? Oh, get chance to hit with our drones. That's pretty important. I feel like. Okay, we'll go with that. Um, 
eternal essence. Oh, okay, I don't care about magic. I don't know if that was smart, spending all of our money to uh, put that in, but whatever. I'm now super smart. When did we get our third AP? Yeah, like when do I get another action pool? Do I need to put stuff into quickness for that? It just seemed to happen like automatically in Shadowrun Returns. Definitely need our decker for the run in the building to overload the thing, at least according to Frau Mueller. So hope that means we don't need a decker for this mission. Let's save, let's save. Yeah, they, still, they also have two action pool as well. Earwig. OTK International is a small-time software developer and it shows. The company's main office is crammed up against the back wall of a massive shared office park, surrounded by competing businesses and larger corporations. A steady trickle of dead-eyed wage slaves flows in and out of the complex. The office park's main entrance is overflowing with hired security, but your forged keycard gets you past them easily enough. A few minutes later, you're walking the winding corridors toward OTK International. You're only, a f you're only a few smashed computers away from putting Amsel's plan into motion. Um. Are we going to need Charisma? Nah. Yeah, that looks good. Passing through the main doors of OTK International, you find yourself in a stretch of industrial hallway. Apparently, the company is too small to warrant such amenities as a lobby or greeting area. The rest of your team is waiting for you at OTK's side entrance, outside the office park and beyond the reach of building security. Letting them in should be as easy as opening a service door. Sneak up. <coughs> Excuse me. You begin creeping toward the wage slave. He's so engrossed in his work that he doesn't seem aware of anything else. Just over halfway across the room, the wage slave's body tenses. He begins to turn in his seat. Duck. The wage slave completes his turn. He stares blankly at the door for a moment, then shakes his head. 
He mutters something about needing to get more sleep, rubs his eyes, and returns to work. Mmm, probably gonna need higher quickness next time, but let's keep going. I mean, we're not here to kill random workers. I don't know. I shouldn't have snuck up on him, I guess. Tap him on the shoulder. He leaps out of his chair and attempts to whirl towards you. His knee smashes in the corner of his desk and he goes crashing to the ground, wailing. Sorry to start you. I'm new here and I just wanted to introduce myself. <laughs> Lol. You're going to give somebody a heart attack sneaking around like that. Not the best way to make a first impression. Alright, new guy, what's your name? I'm um, Johnny. Jonathan, uh, I'm a contractor. Look, I've been here for 36 hours, and I was supposed to clock out 45 minutes ago. Do you need something from me? Because if you don't, I'm out of here. Uh, nothing, I can't wait till the morning. Yeah, crunch time again. Gotta love it. Night, pal. Um, hmm. So, I know I need to let my friends in. But... Maybe I don't. Let's see. Let's see what we can do just sneaking around on our own. A well-used calendar is hung on the wall, covered in notes and appointments. June the 29th has been circled about a half a dozen times. June the 29th. So that's going to be like a pastor or something, right? Maybe. Flying cabinets are all locked. The board is arranged in a grid of names and tasks, most of which seem to be in the completed category. In the corner is a note, Lucy, birthday Tuesday, do not forget. The bookshelf is neatly organized and alphabetized. On the upper shelf is a framed picture of a young blonde girl with braces and a huge smile. So this is what, Lucy's birthday, right? June 29th is Lucy's birthday. Uh, let's search the drawers. Stephen Williams. So Lucy Williams, June 29. Investigate the locked drawer. Oh. The drawer appears to have been secured by some sort of electronic lock. The desk itself however looks relatively flimsy. There's no visible keyhole, no input pad, no card reader. The lock must be controlled through the oh, okay. So, S. Williams, June 29th, unlocked drawer. Sweet. Supervisor's ID badge. Nice, let's save again. So I don't want to get into combat just by myself. Okay, I think we'll avoid going in there. Oh, is this glass? So they can see me doing stuff, okay. Send a drone in. Ooh. Are they talking to my drone then? Because they can't see me. Okay, but let's have the drone show the supervisor's ID badge. 
<sighs> Sorry to have bothered you, sir. You're cleared to be here, but stay where I can see you and don't leave this room. Do I have to deck in? Because I can't do that. But it's... It just said I had to blow up their computers for their past security updates. I shouldn't have to jack in. Yeah, I don't have a decker. Crap. I don't mind combat. Damn. Uh, so I guess that's where my team is, but... Let's see if those drones do attack us or not. Sweet. So yeah, we are authorized. So if I do try and leave this room, what happens? What's on this side? What did it just say? Let's just let's just see if these people attack us for leaving the room. Hey, what do you think you're doing? I told you those doors were off limits. <laughs> Look, I really didn't get right through here. Would you mind? I can't help you, sir. You're cleared to be in this room, but only under direct supervision. And we can't leave our post to escort you into the other room. You just stay in this room, alright? Check your software from where you are and leave. Or I'll have to call this into Central. direct access dude uh, hold on I'm calling this in to clear with central if they give the go-ahead I'll take you wherever you need to be damn it oh poopy Minus two AP. Oh. Wow. So yeah, he's just gonna murder me. Killing my drones. All 
Oh wow. That's a lot of drums. These two, I guess, aren't under my command. Wait, did that not work? Did I not have minus th uh, 3 AP? Yeah, I don't have a great shot. Um, oh, okay, so it decreases. Whatever, I'll die. Oh no. I'm gonna have to reload, I think. What are these drums doing? Are they not do they not guns? Okay. Are their guns that short range? These ones don't have super short range guns. Decker. What? Okay. Hey, janitor. Oh, excuse me. You startled me there. Who are all these people? Who are you exactly? How did you get into this building? Um, I'm new. They just brought me on a QA tester. Oh, well, welcome aboard. From what I've heard about QA testing, I don't envy you. The guys back in the server room will appreciate your presence, I'm sure. Yeah, thanks. You're telling me my husband's been unemployed for over a year now. He takes care of kids, so that's something, but money's pretty tight. Well, step right on in and head in, head to Mandy in reception. She'll get you logged into the system so you can clock in and out. Yeah, what is your name? Jesse. Jesse Sanders. Okay. Maybe that's information that will be helpful. If only we had a Decker. So upset right now. Is 
So they bought my ID, but are they going to be happy with me bringing a whole team of people in here? My guess is no. Oh, okay. They seem pretty chill, actually. So if we had a Decker, we could just destroy it from in here. Which would probably set off an alarm and start a fight. But I'm opening one of these doors will as well. Uh, so let's open this door and then just Jack will run back here to activate the useless drones. That's probably our best option. Yeah, he's down. Oh no. Did I... screwed up. I literally can't do what I need to do from here though. I can't jack in. I didn't bring a decker. Okay, I have to reload because I can't interact with those doors anymore. Actually, okay. Um, Jack, you need to go in here immediately. dll128.exe Okay, D trick Um I guess stand here Nerve bolt I guess we could be behind better cover and... and use our Dragon Slayers thing instead. Yeah, just move here, Dietrich. I forgot Haste uses two APs. So unfortunately, I don't think these fellows are adjacent to one another. Strips to armor. Well, they are armored. I could do that. Yeah, let's eviscerate. Okay. I 
they're going to come in through this door, right? Hang out here, Agar. Oh, crap, I forgot about those drones. Ow! Time to activate all your friends. Like this one. No, it missed. How about this one? Take that. Those are adjacent. Oh, of course they don't bleed though. Pierces up to one armor. That's fine. Um, so we could haste glory. Well, let's hit Tiger. Oh, hopefully this doesn't hurt uh, Glory. Sweet. This will prob probably hurt Glory. No. Oh, see, they can shoot from range. Or are they being so lame before? No, oh, okay, I see them waiting. I'll go get that glory. What is it? Server room door key, okay. So we should just set up in here then. No! You dummy, I wanted uh, Iger to go there. But whatever. First, Iger, can you take out that rigger? We can try.
Okay. Deep, what do you have for me? Electro core. I bet I can't get three of them in there. Whatever. Oh. Um, may do a few damage. Pierces up to one armor. This guy only has one armor. This right in. Nice, big damage. Oh, that guy's gonna bleed out anyway, so don't bother attacking him. Let's just go after this guy down here. Dietrich, you can just finish off that guy, I guess. We're still in combat mode, though. That's interesting. Okay, yeah, these drones are neutral. That's why we're in combat mode. Let's leave them running for the time being. Let's all stack up in this room. Sorry, I agree. You have a bit of a schlep to get there. Oh, what? Really? Are there going to be a bunch of dudes in here? Okay, that's fine. Oh wait, we have grenades! Electro core. If I can, haste core, I guess. Let's see if they have armor. Uh, let's strip some of their armor. Hopefully, they're not immune to that. Ow. Uh, so, yeah, we did strip some armor. Oh, cool. 
what did they just blow up? What did they just blow up? Did they blow up one of my drones? Or just one of the neutral drones? Okay, it must be one of the neutrals. Really easy. Glory, blow up every single one of these. Nice. Nice, nice, sir. Big bada boom. up like this, but, oh, of course the moan has that. Oh, what do we do, what do we do? Drums. Oh my god, really? They are. Shit. Um. Look, I need to heal myself. Jack. Wait, why was that drawn all the way over there? Why wasn't it following? Jason. Bad idea. 
idea. Very sorry, Glory. Um, I forgot about that. drones will buy us a little bit of time. Oh wait, my drones are not in follow mode. Follow, follow. Okay. Um, it'll be fine. Gloria's gonna wait for me at least. on ride home is smooth and uneventful. The high ups at OCK International must be scrambling to try and recover their losses. It's only a matter of time before they make the call and Amsel's compromised data is uploaded to the Night Errant's comlinks. You're going to be rolling into as technology with one hell of an advantage. Not bad for a night's work. Okay, Blitz, we're gonna need you for this one. Wish we took him on the last one. Especially since really I don't think Dietrich contributed a whole lot. Uh, so let's see, do I need to heal my bot buddies? I have no idea. Talk to Paul. Let's actually go to our stash. We need, um... Where is it? Oh, it's right here. Birds? Uh, so you're ready to tell me more, Glory. Jack, a pleasure as always. Need anything from me?
If I didn't know it better, I'd think you were warming up to me. I suppose you might say that. I don't talk to many people, Jack. It's just... It doesn't seem to be worth the effort. I don't... I don't really feel much anymore. Not since... This. If that's true, why are you still talking to me? I suppose because you've shown an interest, and because you haven't let me push you away. I don't want to mislead you, Jack. I still don't feel anything. Not warmth, or friendship, or even trust. But I can appreciate the effort you're making. It's something new, and it's worthy of exploring. You said things went bad when you turned 14. Oh. I don't see any reason to talk about that. The memories are unpleasant, and dredging them up doesn't serve any real purpose. Uh, so we could give her space, but I think uh, she has actually perked up since last time we talked, and it is, I think, helping her. I'm, I'm a therapist now, I'm not just team leader, I'm team therapist. I'm the morale officer. I suppose that's true. Feeling discomfort is better than feeling nothing at all. Alright, here's the deal, Jack. I'm going to talk. You listen. When I'm done, I'm done. No complaints, no arguments. And we'll see what happens. Deal? Deal. Right. So a few days after my 14th birthday, I began to express. Magically, you know. Uh, well, she's not magically active right now because she's chromed to the gills. I was. Not anymore. Anyway, I turned 14. I awakened. I don't even remember how my parents found out about it anymore. I think that my dad caught me playing with a tiny city spirit that I coaxed out of a pile of garbage. Something like that. With everything that happened afterward, those days are kind of a blur. What I do remember is my father's response to the revelation that his little girl was a witch. He beat the living shit out of me with his fists, and then his belt, and then a claw hammer that he grabbed out of his toolbox. All the while my mother was screaming and flailing at him. It took a couple of licks with the hammer too. Oh, she took a couple of licks with the hammer too. Jesus. Did anyone call police or security? Oh, sure they did. Our neighbors were perfectly decent people. Even if they couldn't admit it to themselves, they knew what my father was up to. When they heard a woman and a little girl screaming bloody murder, they were the first to pick up the comm. Unfortunately, police response times can leave a little something to be desired. I assume that they showed up eventually, but I'll never know. I was out of there well before anyone showed up to intervene, but we'll get to that in a second. So finally, after what felt like an hour, Dad stopped tuning me up with the hammer. I had broken ribs, a busted arm, I couldn't see out of my left eye, and my entire right side was covered with one giant bruise. I was bleeding all over the place, making a real mess of the carpet. The old bastard spat on me, his bleeding, crying daughter. He spat on me and told me I was the devil's whore. And then he kicked me out of the house. As I was crawling away, my father told me that he, if he or any of his KZ brothers ever saw me again, they'd treat me as, as the Berlin chapter treats the enemies of God. If you're not familiar with how the KZ here in Berlin deal with heretics, it's decidedly less pretty than what my dad and his buddies did to their victims. I got the hint, and the next morning I hitched a ride out of Stuttgart. Yeah, why didn't you go to the hospital? Oh, I did, but not in Stuttgart. If I went to a local hospital with the kind of injuries that dad gave me, there'd be questions. 
and I couldn't afford to stay in town any longer than I had to. Even if my dad wound up getting arrested for beating me, the rest of the locals would have found me, and I'd have wound up skinned alive and thrown into the, n the Nakar. I wound up in Tubingen. I figured it'd be a safe enough place to find medical attention and maybe call home. It's not far from Stuttgart, but it has a huge student community that I figured I could blend into, and the university there has a decent magic department. My ride dropped me off at the university hospital, and they patched me up pretty good. I had some questions for me about how I got so beaten up, but I lied and told them I'd been mugged, which played nicely into my complete lack of cash, credit, and ID. Oh, so she didn't have her ID. We're gonna fast forward through the next few years. I was a kid on the street. I got by as best I could, doing whatever I had to do. The rest we can leave up to your imagination. Good? Yeah, we're good. Good. Thanks. So anyway, I lived on the street for a few years. Got used to being hungry all the time. Got used to getting rained on. Got by. I was painfully aware that I had magical talents, but without any kind of training or guidance, I didn't really know how to use or develop them. Truth be told, they scared me, so I more or less ignored them. So it just sort of went like that, until a few days after my 17th birthday, that I met Marta and everything changed. Marta was a sweet girl. At first, I took her for a street kid like me. Her clothes were a little ratty, and she seemed comfortable being near me. But she also looked well-fed and happy, and those were two things that I hadn't been in years. We started hanging out, and before I knew what was happening, I was in love. There was a genuine attraction between Marta and me, I think. But I also think that a lot of my affection for her came from the fact that she was the first person in years to give a damn about me. She cared, and I loved her for that. Marta told me about a place where she'd been hanging out. She invited me to join her there. It was called Vierstella, the fireplace, and it was sort of a commune for dispossessed youth. It turns out that a lot of the street kids I'd known over the years had moved there. The way that they'd disappeared, I'd assumed that they'd been kidnapped or killed, or had gone back to their parents. But there they were. I remember being kind of angry about it. Like, how did everybody get the memo about this but me? Marta calmed me down. She was good at helping me work through my feelings. I wound up following her to the fireplace. To a street kid, it was basically paradise. The owner, a guy, named, a guy named Harrow, had set up this little farm just outside Tübingen in the Schönbuch forest. The Schönbuch is officially a nature park, but not many people go there nowadays. Too much fear of paranormal animals, I guess. Anyway, park or not, it was plenty big enough for us to hide in. It was also safe and pretty. The farm was well stocked with food. Most importantly, they gave us a sense of community and stability that we'd never had on the street, and we loved Harrow for that. He became like a surrogate father to us. That's enough for now. I need to process all of this, and I don't want to continue forward until I've had the chance to do that. I know that this all happened years ago, but I guess it's still pretty raw to me, so I'm going to ask you to give me some space for a while. We can pick it back up later. Okay. Space acquired. Oh, this isn't the best of times. Why not? What's what's wrong, Iger? Really? Okay. I'm good with that. Let's see if we have any new new mail. Whoa! Oh my god, that's a lot of messages. Hoy, Jack! 
Just wanted to tell you that I've met with limited success in working on a stack of DVDs. It's not throwing any problem, but at least I'm making some headway. If you look on the table beside your DVD player, you'll find another recovered disc. I wasn't able to salvage all of the files on it, but I think you might find what I did recover to be of interest. For my part, I'm going to continue working on the other DVDs. To tell you the truth, I wouldn't hold out much hope, though. They're all badly damaged and suffering from disc rot besides. I'll be in touch. My best to you and your team. If you value new hardware coming to KB, we need to talk. One of my weapon shipments was hijacked by a local gang. I can promise 500 million. And if you recover the shipment, I'll have some new gear on the shelf. Okay, a new job. Let's uh, talk to Metback when we get on the street. It's ring Ficko's life. If Maximum's face appears, he's wearing a broad grin. You can hear the sounds of celebration. Hey there, Muscle. Not sure if Tuck gave me the right address, but I figured it was worth a shot. I don't know if you heard, but our favorite poly club got hit from all sides of the F state today. It was glorious. Anyway, I just thought you'd want to share in the good news. And thanks for your help back there. I don't think we'd have uh, made it out without you. Take care, Jack. Hey, Jack. Uncle Dietrich told me that I could message you here, so I figured I should. He probably told you that I'm living at Samuel's, huh? Well, that's where I am. It's different. I'll give it that much. I like that I don't get pressured to hurt people here, so that's good. And nobody smacks me around, even though I can tell a lot of the trog or orcs and trolls want to. I do get yelled at a lot, and called a lot of names. But I guess that making me feel bad about that kind of thing is all part of the plan. No, that sounds horrible. Like... Like, sure, he fell into, like, a bad crowd before, but, like, want, looking like you want to smack him around and yelling at him and calling him names is just going to, like, like, normally I would figure that would just reinforce the negative things that you want to wean him off of, like, I don't know, kill him with kindness. Life kind of sucks right now, but at least nobody's going to make me kill anyone. Uncle D says that it's going to get better, and maybe it will. I don't know. Anyway, what I mostly wanted to say was thanks for not killing me back at the Humanus compound. I had a gun on you, so you totally could have. But you didn't, and I'm really glad about that. I guess I should thank you. You got me out of that horrible job alive. I don't think I could have made it on my own. What happened on that run took everything else away from me, but at least I'm still breathing. The Lodge turned me into a killer, Jack. That gnaws at my guts every minute of every day. I still can't sleep at night. Innocent people, normal people, died because of what I did. And you know why they made me do it? Because they could. I don't know, maybe this doesn't bother you. You're a shadow runner, after all. You kill people all the time. Just another day at the office, huh? Well, I'm not like you. I can't just kill people on the job and forget about it the next day. This is going to haunt me for the rest of my life. I don't know how to live like this, but still better than not living at all. That's what I keep telling myself. And so I figured I might as well tell it to you too. Well, that sucks. Oh, doctor. Okay, so we need to see Met back and we need to see the doctor. Sure. Probably at the ghouls. Hey, Jack, this is Silky from the hotel. I hope it's okay I'm writing to you. Samuel gave me your email address. Anyway, I just wanted to thank you for everything you did for me. Kicking my cram habit was the hardest thing I've ever done, and I don't think I would have tried if you hadn't talked me into it. To celebrate my newfound sobriety, I've decided to sign on as a volunteer at the charity. Who knows? Maybe giving back to the community will help turn things around in my life. Anyway, thanks again, Jack. I owe you one. Oh, that's sweet. Okay, let's talk with the doc and let's meet Gunnar. Let's not talk to Paul yet. Oh, do we have do we have a fourth DVD? No. So that's just an old email that 
that I didn't uh, read before looking at that third DVD. Uh, do you have any new news, Blitz? Gotta make my rounds to everyone. Oh, okay. Hoy, Jack, what you need? What's going on? Uh, well, Chief, I hate to admit it, but I might be in a little bit of a trouble here. What sort of trouble? Well, you remember those creditors I told you about? The ones who loaned me all that money? Yeah, well, as it turns out, some of them are a little less forgiving than I thought they were. Well, one in particular seems to have taken things kind of personally. How personally? I, uh, I got a package in the mail. It had somebody's thumbs in it. Yeah. Thumbs. They came in a cigar box, packed in salt. I've got no idea who they belong to. I, uh, I'm pretty sure they're meant to convey some sort of message. Yeah. I don't want to lose my thumbs, Chief. I like my thumbs. I think I need to pay this guy back. Luckily, I've got a plan. I know how to get myself out of hot water with the meat grinder. I've got it all specked out. You took a loan from somebody named Meat Grinder. Hey, Chief, come on. I feel bad enough about this already. There's no need to rub it in. Anyway, like I was saying, I can make it all right again. But I'll need your help to do it. Well, there's this group out in Drogenkippa. They call themselves the Landberg Ring. They're a financial crime organization. There's a lot of bad blood between them and the Meat Grinder. Anyway, back when I was running with the Schwarzer Herzen, I laid out the groundwork for a hit on the Landberg Ring. I was never able to make good on it, though. For some reason, none of the other gangers ever volunteered to help out. With your help, I could steal enough money from them to cover my debt and get myself back into Meat Grinder's good graces in the process. So what do you think? A quick run. Just you and me. With me in the Matrix and you as my man on the ground. We hit him, satisfy my debt, and laugh about it on our way back home. Sound like a plan? Sure, I'll help. Yeah, no problem, Chief. No problem at all. You can count on me. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got some last minute stuff to take care of before we get started. Oh, and Jack? Thanks. Oh, uh, no, no, not at the U-Bahn, Chief. I won't be physically going there. I've seen enough of that place for one lifetime. I'll be jacking in from a terminal here in the KB. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. We'll go all alone. Let's talk to Diedrich in case he has something new. Everyone seems to have something new, so... Hey, why did you switch from fronting a band? Honestly, working the stage was getting boring, boss. Spitting and screaming at the world was fine and good when I was a kid, but it just didn't do it for me anymore. The Dragon Slayer wanted to fight a real enemy, so I left the band behind. I turned to the shadows. I don't know, I guess I figured that'd be the best way to find one. Alright, yeah. Yeah, I guess not. Feels kind of daunting, truth be told, but it's exciting all the same. I've been looking for a worthy adversary for a while now. It's kind of satisfying having a white whale to chase. How long have you been looking for a real enemy? Not too long, ever since I took down the last one. The last one? Of course, I might be able to sit around feeling pleased with myself if I followed the creator or the moon maiden. But the Dragon Slayer ain't that kind of idol. If I'm not drinking, I'm fighting. If I'm not doing either of those things, I'm looking for a bigger, better fight to get in next time. It's a remarkably simple code to live by. Who was the last one? Gang Boss, a great big orcish bastard called the, the Wild Swine, led the local chapter of the Horde. They had my sights set on him and his for a while. 
They'd hurt a lot of people. I figured they'd pose a challenge. I wasn't wrong about that, but I took them out in the end. Oh yeah, so you're just gonna keep doing this till you get killed, Dietrich. Well, boss, the way I figure it, it'll end when I pick a fight I can't win. Maybe this one, maybe the next. It'll be hard to top a great dragon. That's the way the Dragon Slayer wants it, and who am I to refuse? That's enough talk for today, boss. Besides, you've got other things to do. Yeah, 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 I do. Any updates on Alexander? Nothing new, boss. He's adjusting. It's gonna take some time. Uh, did we ever ask him that? The Black Lodge. Shadowy, powerful, secretive as hell, with deep pockets and a penchant for hiding the truth. They conduct all of their business through dupes and go-betweens. That sound about right. Yeah. Well, if it's them, and whoever you're talking about, I ain't saying it is, then I advise you to stay away from them. Stay far, far away. And wherever you, you do, don't take their money. If you do, they'll own you. All right. I already took some of their money. Well, shit. Well, that's great. Tell me everything I need to know. Well, story is the Black Lodge was the mother of all conspiracies. Supposedly, they've been around for hundreds of years, and they've been practicing magic since well before the Awakening. Impossible, I know, but I believe it. You ever heard of the Masons, the Knights Templar, the Bavarian Illuminati? They were all puppets of the Black Lodge. None of them knew who they were working for, but the Lodge was there, pulling the strings. And always have been. Still are today. That's the story. Magic before the Awakening? Pff, ridiculous. I don't know what world you live in, boss, but in my world, ridiculous things happen every day. Anyway, that's the story. Believe it or don't, your choice. You already know what I think. Uh, yeah, tell me about your idol. Picking a fight that you won't win. It's bound to happen eventually. Probably sooner rather than later. And there's something you can do to stop that. Well, I suppose I could refuse. That probably wouldn't be a good idea, especially not now. Remember, boss, the Dragon Slayer's where my magic comes from. If I turn away from him, you'd better believe he'll turn away from me. Besides which, I don't even know if I can refuse him. He's been with me for so long. I don't know where he stops and I begin. <laughs> but don't worry about me, boss. I've known that this was coming for my entire life. And when it happens, I'll go down in a blaze of glory the likes of which you can't even imagine. That's a promise. I can't really believe your idol wants you to commit suicide. Of course not. The Dragon Slayer doesn't want me to die, but he does want me to kill dragons. That ain't supposed to be safe or easy. It isn't my idol's fault I'm getting too old to keep up with his, uh, with his wishes. Yeah, what if you did pick a, a weaker dragon than to fight? That's an interesting idea. If it were big enough and heinous enough, enough, he might be satisfied. I've never tried to bargain or negotiate with the Dragon Slayer before. I'm not sure how I feel about it. I don't know how he'd take it either. The Dragon Slayer doesn't like to be questioned, and his temper is even shorter than mine. But I'll tell you what, boss. I'll think about it. And did you... okay. Okay, so we have talked to everyone except for Paul. Sure, we'll talk to Paul. Jack the Rigger, a well done as usual. Oh, a job well done as usual. And the plan has worked swimmingly, I might add. I'm already patched into the Night Errant comm system. If and when they summon their high threat response team, I will know. As soon as you're finished resupplying, I'd recommend heading directly to the Jewel District. I take it that's where the facility is. 
That is correct. The Azus control the majority of the district, and you'll find their research facility at the heart of it. Considering the level of security that Az technology is running, I wouldn't count on medical evac being available on this run. In fact, I'd bet against it. That means if anyone falls unconscious in there, they'll be buried when the building collapses. Obviously, you can't let that happen. I'd suggest stocking up on medical supplies before leaving the KB. Sure. One last thing, Jack. Frau, Frau Mueller sent me a message while you were on the OTK run. She says that when you reach the sub-basement of the facility, you'll find a security door. The door's maglocks can be opened via a voice print recognition system. Apparently, Frau Mueller surreptitiously recorded your meeting. She claims she's added your voice print to the AS Technology database. Sweet. If our client is to be believed, you'll have the necessary access to open the door. The rest of your team, however, will not. When you reach that door, I'd recommend grouping up. Only you can open it, and there's no saying what you'll find on the other side. Uh, she should have briefed me. Agreed, our Frau Mueller is clearly out of her depth. That said, we find ourselves between a rock and a hard place. We desperately need the money she's paying for this job, and we've already committed ourselves by attacking OTK. Despite Frau Mueller's lack of professionalism, we need to press forward, and that means you're going to need to get past that door. Go, go now, Jack. We need to strike while the iron's hot. Eventually. I have so many side quests to do. Uh, so let's go talk to the good doctor first. And then we'll talk to Matt back. Uh... Yeah, the doctor's wants marked as optional. Yeah, you want to see me, dude. Hmm. So I had to, I guess, talk to him about that, to talk to him about the message. Interesting. Hey, you want to talk? Business, I have a job for you. That's true, we haven't always seen eye to eye, but I'm confident that you're the right man for this job. Good enough. Good, so let's get down to brass tacks, shall we? Back before I emigrated here from my native Spain, I worked in partnership with a Berlin-based R&D lab. The biotech that they were developing was very hush-hush, very cutting edge. Our arrangement was that I would bankroll their research and that they, in turn, would provide me with unique merchandise to sell in my clinics. About two years ago, things went sour. My name was slandered, and the fickle mistress's public perception turned on me. An ugly business, I assure you. Even talking about my fall from grace makes my stomach turn. The injustice of it is almost too much to bear. Uh, what did they accuse you of? What didn't they? Theft? Medical malpractice? The sale of stolen goods? Other, more colorful accusations that do not bear repeating. But that was then, and th this is now. I came here to Berlin to escape all of that. Of course, I also moved here to be closer to the lab that I'd funded and the merchandise that I'm owed. Okay. Yes, and to find out what happened to the lab itself. The facility is locked down, you see, nearly impenetrable. I have no idea why. As I was packing to move to Berlin, all was well. Sixteen hours later, I arrived to discover the building locked tight with my merchandise inside. The Turk, Altug, has been running surveillance on the site since I set up shop here. In that time, no one's entered and no one has left. Whatever went wrong in there must have killed the research team. 
I want you to find a way into the building, recover the cybertech that they were developing, and find out what happened to the researchers in that order. Hmm. Oh, why didn't you talk to Monica? Who says that I didn't? I had a tumultuous friendship with your dear departed Monica. We had our ups and downs, you see, and on this subject she was most certainly down. That was her choice. I'm hoping you'll be savvy enough not to make the same mistake. Um, what is in this for me? Well, I can't afford to pay you a new yen, and that's your own fault, by the way. You shut off a good chunk of my revenue when you pulled that stunt down the sewers. But what I can do is give you first crack at any biotech that you recover from the site and make it available to you at a discount. This is top of the line wear that we're talking about, mind you. Better than anything else that I've got in stock. And because it's biotech, the essence loss from implanting it will be minimal. It's a good deal. Win-win for you, really. So what's it going to be? Will you take the job or not? Sure. Excellent. The facility that you're looking for is the former laboratory of Switzerland Bioscience. Take the U-Bahn to the uh, Adenauer plots and you're sure to find it. Best of luck. Okay, sweet. We'll go ahead and talk to Matt back. Welcome back. You need some weapons, some ammo, perhaps? Yeah, I got your message. Ah, uh, a gang from nearby Keys, uh, from a nearby Keys, has been at hijacking shipments bound for the KB, taking money out of our pockets. They could use your help to stop this from happening. Your dear departed Monica used to provide encryption and information control for the KB. Now that she's gone, we merchants have been having no end of trouble. The obvious answer is that a gang has been intercepting our communications. What kind of communications? You know, shipping manifests, payment orders, that kind of thing. A group with an agenda could use that information to set up an ambush. And that's just what this gang has been doing. Several cargo trucks full of goods have already been hijacked en route to the KB. I had a tracking device placed on the last shipment that I sent out. Containers full of weapons and medical supplies. Sure enough, it got taken. I've tracked it to Gesundbrunnen. Gesundbrunnen. If you've never been there, it's a key is built out of an old U-Bahn station and some old bunkers. Rumor has a new gang called the Robin Geister is holed up there. I suspect that the two things are related. So I need you to go to Gesundbrunnen and find the Robin Geister and get our goods back. I can offer you a measly 500 million for the task. If you can recover a missing weapon shipment, I'll be able to sell you some better hardware too. Uh, sure, what can you tell me about it? Not much, I'm afraid. From what I've heard, the Robin Geister are tricky. They have a reputation for stirring up trouble, then disappearing without a trace. I would tread carefully in Gesundbrunnen if I were you. How do I get there? Just take the U-Bahn. The line still runs. Not many folks stop at Gesundbrunnen anymore. The market there used to be something of a tourist attraction. I think they've fallen in hard times recently. Sure. One more thing, Jack. I'm going to need you to go in light on this one. Take a friend along if you like, but no more than one. If you spook them, they could trash the merch. Best go quiet. Best go soon, too, before the trail goes cold. Jeez, alright. Uh, I'm going to talk to the tech lady down here, see if she has maybe something. Maybe she'll get a new shipment in if I go do a quest for her. Yeah, actually, what do you have? Okay, so yeah, she doesn't even sell class astronauts yet. 
It looks like we can upgrade some of our stuff, though. Okay, so we have to upgrade this. And we only have two karmas. That's fine. We now have an effective 10 inch, right? No, 9. Effective 9 inch. That's fine. Yeah, that's pretty good. Talk to. Wait a minute. Oh. Hey there, Altuk was just telling me you were around. Trade a story. Yeah, what are you looking for? Well, you're new here. I I know that you knew Monica, and I've got a vague idea about when what went down the night she died. But I want to know what you think your most exciting adventure has been. Okay. Oh. Okay, cool. Cool. What is your secret? I never really went to school. Pretty much been a street kid, as long as I can remember. And there's so much to learn from people outside of school that I never really bothered. Makes it a difficult job. Makes it difficult to get a job. So as all good street kids do, I chose a place to hunt with my friends and always hung out, hung out there. That was Altug's cafe. And he was super nice about me and mine. I felt more comfortable with him than I ever did, my Vater. <laughs> and we talked a lot when I was waiting around for my friends. He must have been fairly comfortable with me too, otherwise he wouldn't have offered me a job. Technically I'm the barista, but like I said before, ears and hands. I run his errands, I gather gossip, sometimes I even make coffee. I much prefer this hook his hookah options, though. Real coffee makes me feel paranoid. Speaking of which, I should probably get back to work. See you around. Sure. Let's go talk to good old Isle Doug. Welcome back, Honor to Fendom. How may I serve you? Oh, have we not talked about his real coffee? Oh, here's some cheap booze. Oh, yeah, maybe I'll hold on to it. Coffee? Yes, for individuals of refined taste, I offer genuine bean coffee from my native Turkey. This is top shelf item, my friend, and not for the general public. Only for those few discerning connoisseurs, you who can properly appreciate it. Tell me about this delicious Turkish coffee. It's hand-picked by my family in Turkey, a true delicacy of the sixth world. This was considered a luxury even before the awakening, when bean coffee was everywhere. Every street corner, they say. Trust me, if your coffee experience has been limited to soy calf, you must not deny yourself this golden opportunity. You will see God. Sure. 50 million. Why, there's a specialty item delivered at some cost. I cannot part with it for less than 50 million a cup. Sure. I'm surprised I even had 50 million, I'll be honest. Oh, I'm holding the Turkish coffee. Is this an item? Like a mission item? Authentic Turkish cuff coffee, sort of an insulated ceramic travel cup. Interesting. Yeah, see you around, buddy. You suck, though. Did you have anything new? Oh yeah, I am curious about Altug. 
Now I can tell you that you haven't already guessed. Resident Spymaster, Coffee Brewer, Outsider, the official Turk of the KB. Yeah, I doubted it. You're too smart for me. But you want to know why, right? It works for him. He had to make some sort of living here in the KB, you know? He's not got a trade skill. He's not goblinized, so he couldn't hang with Beckenbauer. If he opened a normal shop, he'd be outed, ousted by someone thinking he's stealing their job because he's not German. The coffee shop was a good option because it's obvious. He stays exotic and does what they expect of him, with the intel and stuff. Sorry about the intel dump. It's not really useful information. You'd probably guess it anyway at this point. But you asked, so... You've been a real doll. Gone way too much information out of me, though. See you around, ya. Yeah? Um, I don't ever want to go in that magic shop again. They give me the heebie-jeebies. Um, I guess we do know someone that cooks drugs. Let's just give them the jazz recipe. Maybe he can pay us for it. I don't want any drugs. Special concoction. What's the deal with the special concoction? This is the real deal, Chummer. A proprietary blend designed and delivered by yours truly. Pharmaceutical grade kamikaze cut with genuine spirit residue from the tear and then mixed with my secret blend of herbs and spices. You want to get high, buy some Nova Coke and throw yourself a party. But if you want to soar, you get yourself some flash. Sure, here's the jobs for me. Oh, you know I'm your man. I can hook you up right now. So we can. S Ooh, that jazz is actually freaking awesome. The flash is pretty good too. For one round only, oh. Oh, that's not worth it. Like, for one round. Like, it, it might be worth using for emergencies, but the fact that it, having it in my inventory means that I can't have a, a med kit or something like that makes it, I think, useless. This is so five rounds for plus one AP. I think that's longer than Dietrich's haste spell lasts. So this is like just a better haste. Hmm. Hmm. I've only got a hundred bucks though. Uh, do you have anything new, Slimmy? Someone will come out tomorrow. We could all use a little sun. It's not literal sun, silly. I mean, tomorrow will be a better day. Monica used to say something like that. When I was tired, when I was sad, when I only wanted to sleep, she would tell me that told me I would forget that the pain would go away. I've lived many lives, but I've been an orphan more times than anything. It was the first story I found where I needed to get away. Give me that soy. Mmm, <laughs> delicious soy. Alto would be very disappointed at me drinking this. Have you ever tried to go for sins? But I need them. Monica understood that, and Zack says they're safe. I don't know what I'd do without them. Without them, I dream. And I don't want to dream. I don't want to remember. They help me forget. They help me be strong and smart, and never lose anyone. 
that makes it a good thing, right? Can't run from your problems forever. Kim turns her head. I can get what I need from Zack Flash or Doc. And they pay me a lot. Oh, and they let me pay, however. Oh, ooh, that sounds gross. Monica was always nice. And Paul. And the angel's nice to me, too, usually. I know Monica's gone now, but I can still stay, right? Uh, of course. Uh, maybe, maybe she's someone that we convinced to get off the Sims. I don't know. Let's talk to Sammy. We haven't talked to him in a while. I guess we haven't talked to this guy either in a long time. Just checking in. Sweet. Try harder. Do you just want to try harder? Yeah, we're all stepping up. Oh uh, no, I'm out of here. I need some new dialogues. Al Alexander, he's adjusting. That was silky. Sweet. Uh, so is everything for the U-Bahn? So, take the U-Bahn to Dragon Kippa. Take the U-Bahn to S Technologies Berlin Compound. Take the U-Bahn to Adenauer Plots. So this one, we can take one person. Er, there's this one, the one. So this one we're going by ourselves. Hello, Alex. I was talking about another Alexander, though, not you. Uh, I guess that's just this fully optional one. Wait a minute. Where, um... Oh, okay, at the very top is the Gesundbrunnen one. Uh, so let's do one of those two. Gesundbrunnen or Adenauerplatz. I need to take you on this run. I can't take you on this run. Alexander isn't one of my uh, party members. He's Dietrich's nephew who's living with Samuel right now. I can see if I can take Dietrich though. You can be Dietrich. Do you want to be um, the shaman? All right, so let's see. This top one, I think I have to do all by myself so I don't get to take anyone. Uh, dinner plots. Yeah, hopefully we can take a full team with this. No, just one. Uh, I'd rather take Glory though than Dietrich, I think. <laughs> Okay, I, 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 I can do that. Let's see. Um, no. Oh, so I don't get a team going to Gesundbrunnen either, it looks like. Yeah, Hong Kong is the next one. Geist. What, uh, what, what were you when you played this? I'm a rigger. I'm going to be a rigger in all three, I think. I think it was a Decker um, when I first played um, Returns.
Okay, so we do get to take some here. I'll take I'll take deeper gear. Gasun Brumen. I started Hong Kong at one point, but I've never um I never really got very far. It was a short train ride to Gasun Brennan. You exit the subway car, stepping onto the old, grungy platform. The place is deserted, though. Signs of life... Oh. The place is deserted, though signs of life are everywhere. A gaping hole in the ceiling filters cool, hazy light in from above. To your right, a small plot of crops struggles to endure the cold and the limited light of the station. Trash and junk litters the, pla the platform. It's clear that this place hasn't had anything resembling a janitorial staff in quite some time. Somewhere in this old, run-down U-Bahn station lies the entrance to Gasun Brunin Keys, and hopefully someone, and hopefully some leads on the whereabouts of the Robin Geister and Gunari's missing shipment. The Robin Geister. Let's go. Oh, look at these crops everywhere. They're glorious. They're growing, um, potatoes. Old fluorescent glow lights barely keeping the plants alive. Inspect. That's far enough, friend. An older man raises his hand, squinting as you approach. To his left, a young orc shifts his weight, resting one hand casually on a pistol at his hip. Both are dressed in what might be considered uniforms, but it's hard to tell. We don't get many visitors down here these days. And you'll forgive me for saying, but we don't really look like the type that usually comes through here. He looks fed for one thing. <laughs> Indeed. Zeb, so what brings you to Gesundbrunnen, stranger? Huh. Do we lie? Sure, let's uh, use our, our charisma to lie. Uh, about wanting to visit their, their market. Well, maybe a few years ago that was true. These days, well, it's hard times all around, I suppose. But you're welcome to go in, of course. Customers are always welcome. Oh, and talk to Quarren if you want to hear some good stories about the market back in its prime. He's always happy to share a tale or two. Watch your step on the ladder there. Oh, this is the orc card. Some of the stops get slippery when it's cold. <laughs> Let's be very, uh chill and just out of nowhere ask if they know about the Robin Geister. A guard, eh? Oh, a, a gang, eh? No, we keep security pretty tight around here. If a gang like that was running stuff through here, we'd know about it. Now look, we don't want any trouble around here. On second thought, maybe we should just move along and catch the next train back. Come to think of it, the market's closing pretty soon anyway. Huh. Yeah, I don't want to cause any trouble. I'm just gonna take a quick look. Just watch yourself, okay? If you cause a scene looking for this gang of yours, there's more than a little militia here. Uh, oh, there's more to our little militia here than you want to mess with. Sweet. He's parched. Wait, 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 can I give him a drink? I have beverages with me. No, I can't. Oh, 
Okay, so that's the guy we can talk to about stories. Let's go check out this club, or bar, or whatever. How'd they get a wagon down here? Why would they need a wagon down here? Goldfish. Bartenders, of course, got a cool coat. Yeah, let's talk to Corin. The man before you is of average build and in nondescript dress. He's leaning against the old wooden cabinet, reading a book. As you approach, he looks up and casts a warm smile in your direction. Guten Tag, the name's Quarren, friend. Can't say I've seen you around these parts before. Just passing through, or...? Um... What can you tell me? Gesundbrunnen. Well, it's my home for one. And we've got a small bar set up over there. But of course, you'll want to know about the market. It used to be something to behold, my friend. One of the grandest markets in the city. You could find nearly anything in these stalls for the right price. It's a real shame, but little by little, things slowed down. Folks stopped talking, stopped taking the subway line so much. But I guess that's the way of the flux. Yeah, have you seen anything about a shipment of weapons? I wish that I had, friend. It's too bad. This place used to be soaring with commerce, but now hardly anything passes through here, I'm afraid. Folks around here are lucky enough to have a full meal at the end of the day. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, me too. Thanks for the friendly words, though. Most folks that come through here are either looking to bum a quick handout or steal what they can before disappearing. Yeah, can I do anything to help? No, I don't think so, friend, but I thank you for the gesture. Say, have you ever heard the story of Shinderhanes? Um, no. Shinderhanes was an outlaw centuries ago, back in the Napoleonic days. See, he was a thief, a greedy one. If you believe the stories, he and his gang raided up and down the Rhine, stealing for themselves. But something happened. The people of the Rhineland, they were inspired by Shindarhanes. In his time, they hailed him as a hero. He was stealing from the French, you see. <laughs> I think something happened then. Something surprising, even to Shindarhanes. I think because of this, perhaps he became the hero people wanted him to be. Maybe he did start stealing from the rich and giving to the poor. I don't know. The history books are confusing, to say the least. At any rate, the point is this, friend. I think that maybe, if enough people believe something to be true, it can change the truth of that thing. Perhaps if enough people here in Gesundbrunnen have a hope to believe in, then our fate will change as well. Until then, well, we continue on. Oh uh, yeah, Robin Hood. Uh... Ha, huh, no, you would think, but that's an altogether different tale, I assure you, much more romanticized than Shindar Hannes. Now is there anything else I can help you with? Uh, I'll be going. What about you, goldfish? What do you know? What are you wearing? There's a dead fox on your head, lady. Her classically nasal American accent is obvious. What does a... Is an American accent classically nasal? What sort of American accent? The fox is not her hair, it's a headdress. She's probably a shaman. Hey kiddo, share a drink with me. Sure. 
awesome. Unfortunately, there aren't a lot of options here. They've got beer, a homebrewed gin, and schnapps. Pick your poison. I've been drinking gin and tonics. The tonic cuts out some of the gas flavor. I think they've been distilling in old propane tanks. Yuck. Uh, schnapps. Uh, sure thing, guy. He slides a tumbler full of sweet-smelling pear schnapps down your way. It's warm. Ooh, they're pear schnapps. Delicious. So what's a girl like you doing in a place like this? I'm just traveling through. I heard there was a market, but, well, look at this place. So I'm just having a drink with this fine gentleman here and then moving on. Uh, where are you from? Okay, so she would have a Californian accent, if anything, and I don't know what that sounds like besides, like, surfer bros, and I, I'm not doing that. I guess, like, a valley girl accent, it could be, but I'm not doing that either. I'm from the California Free States, doing the whole Europe tour thing, you know? Besides, getting me out of that hellhole, it's been a real good learning experience. Had some good fun, made some good friends. But it's a hellhole everywhere these days. Can't drink enough to forget some things I've seen. I'm all for communism and anarchy and free love, but sometimes the F-State goes too far. Uh, why, whatever do you mean? It's just the little things like the turf wars and the racists and junk like that. You know, like those humanist assholes. Unpleasant! But that shit aside, I like the idea of a state without the man. Listen, my name's Goldfish. What's yours? Um... They call her Goldfish because she doesn't have any long-term memory. Uh, they call me Jack. Jack the Rigger. Nice to meet you, Jack the Rigger. Now that I've said my bit, what are you doing in a place like this? I just came here for the market, like you. <laughs> At least there's alcohol. Uh, Ma'am, it's synthahol. Well, whatever it is, I'll drink more to it. She downs her glass and slams it on the bar with a loud exhalation. So, what were you hoping to find down here? <laughs> Robin Hood? <laughs> uh, the Robin Geister, actually. Robin Raven Ghosts? Might be anything in Gesundbrunnen. Seems like everyone and everything down here is a ghost. Ghost of the past. Ghost trains! Ghostly thin folks pale for lack of sunlight. I need sunlight too. I like to joke I photosynthesize, but it just gives me so much energy. Energy these people don't have anymore. Maybe I've been down here long enough. Maybe I'm a ghost too. <laughs> Alright, that's it, Fraulein. You're officially cut off. Your total is 36 million. Can I at least buy something for my friend here? He's been talking with me a bit and hasn't had anything. He is not capitalized there, and that really bothers me. Just FYI. No, you're cut off, lady. I don't want you even sipping out of it. Dude, chill! Forget I asked. Sorry, I couldn't get you anything else, but thanks for being a pal. Okay, so we've made a friend. Why, I am Robin Hood. Ooh. Moldy soy cakes. Disgusting. Okay, so there was a ladder over there. Uh, 
It looks like there's a whole little room up here. Is that the market? I guess so. Surface access, oh, okay. Odd merchant. Militia captain. Shopkeeper. Crate. This crate appears to have been pried hastily open. There's a partially torn label on a tripping label on the side. Most of the ink has been worn off, worn off, but the word cruise bar is clearly on it. Uh, so this merchant is a badman. Or at least bought goods from the badman. Oh, scuff marks. You notice this have scuff marks on the ground, as if something heavy was dragged across here. The marks vanish into the wall. You find a small seam in the wall that suggests there might be a passageway hidden in the wall here. You cannot spot a clear mechanism for opening it. Yeah, let's ask around. Someone's gonna spill the beans. What is this? Chain. This air is in extreme disrepair. Water's flooding out of the walls and stagnating in pools on the tile floor. You can smell the mildew from here. A terminal. This appears to be an old U-Bahn information terminal. Judging by the system's design and current condition, it's quite old. As you approach, the machine makes a series of sputtering sounds as the dust-covered screen flickers dimly to light. Primary database not found, restarting in offline mode. The screen goes dark as the machine begins to emit a bizarre variety of clicking and chirping sounds. After an interminable amount of time, the screen finally shudders back to life. Welcome to Gasun Brunin Station. Please select an option from the menu below. Data corrupted. Data corrupted. Station history. Route information. Data corrupted. Enter custom query. Station history. Gasun Brunin Station opened in 1930 as the final stop along the U-Bahn's U-8 line. It was designed by prominent U-Bahn architect Alfred Gren Gren Grenander. Construction on the U-8 line began in 1914 under Algemein El Gesellschaft, but labor shortages and the First World War put the project on hold for over a decade. The eventual completion and opening of this home line between the Nukoln and Gesundbrunnen in 1930 represented a major step forward in connecting Berlin's working class districts to the city center. During World War II, many unfinished tunnels and stations along the U-8 line were converted into air raid shelters, including parts of Gesundbrunnen Station. In the decades following the war, the station also served as an emergency fallout shelter in the event of nuclear attack. During the Cold War, the U-8 line continued to run between Nukoln and Gesundbrunnen, taking it under the wall and through parts of East Berlin. The train would skip all the East Berlin stations until it merged on the far side, near Gesundbrunnen. Today, the U-8 line continues to operate, carrying thousands of passengers through Gesundbrunnen station on a daily basis. In addition, the former bunker at this location has been transformed into a popular museum exhibit, showcasing the history and development of Berlin's underworld. Please inquire at the information kiosk for museum rates and hours of admittance. Sure, give me route information. Oh, okay. Don't, don't give me it. Custom query. Robin Geister. Nope. Um, yeah, I don't really have a custom query, I guess, to put in. Okay, we'll have to figure something out. Oh, what are these crates? They don't send you part of the ship. So this crate is the only one that we found that was clearly part of the ship. What about you? You got crates? NERPS! They've got NERPS for sale!
What's so odd about this merchant? Hello there, newcomer. I have many exciting and rare weapons for you to peruse. Instruments of death of the sort you'll not find anywhere else in Berlin. Care to take a look around? Despite the shopkeeper's claims, her inventory looks decidedly poor. Most of these weapons appear rusty and in ill repair. A particularly cobbled together pistol stands out from the bunch. Slapdash pistol. Um, hmm. It's very expensive. Why is it so expensive? I'm not understanding this. So. It does the same damage as this, the same range as this, as half the capacity, but it's significantly more price. What? Uh, well, we don't have enough money, so. What's up with that pistol? Exquisite, is it not? The work of a master craftsman who used to live here. Forge some of the finest slug throwers you'll find this side of the Atlantic. And at that price, a steal. Uh, it looks like it's hot glued together, friend. As I said, the work of a master craftsman. A weapon made by any other would simply break after being fired. Uh, I don't have enough money, very sad, otherwise I would purchase it. I came down here with virtually no money. Actually, can I sell things? Yeah, can I take another look? Do I have anything I can sell? Oh look, I have all of these weapons that I'm never going to use. Let's, let's sell that. Um, oh, that's actually a really good pistol. But I just don't have enough range of combat to use it. Huh. Maybe I'll hold on to it, just in case. But we can sell these grenades, because I will actually never use them. Uh, drugs? Do I want drugs? Not really, I guess. Yeah, so I definitely don't want nitro. Uh, yeah, we just don't have enough stuff to sell to... We could sell our suit. We're gonna have to sell like literally everything though to get enough money for um for that shoddy pistol. Why would we want the shoddy pistol? I'm so confused. Like at that price, it's got to be something special, right? Even though its stats say otherwise. I don't know, I'm not gonna bother. But I'm still gonna sell uh, this crap because this is stuff I don't need. Um, basic med kits? I don't think that we will need these. We use higher quality med kits. I'll keep the rest though. Cool. Okay. Let's save. We haven't saved in a while.
Well, hey there, stranger. I got a sale on today. You interested in some rations? Salvage? Some home remedies? Let's see what it has for sale first. Force one earth elemental fetish. Uh, no thanks. You have very little actually for sale. Oh, there's a crate behind you though. That looks like it was marked for uh, the KB. Why is it here? Uh, no. I don't know anything about crates. Ooh, it's just us here, friend. Well, okay, yeah, look. Yeah, the rabbin gaster came by yesterday. Asked me to help move the rest of those medical supplies, man. Then they disappeared. I don't know where they went. I mean, hey, I gotta make a living, right? Look around here. They leave me this kind of score, I'm grateful. Already sold most of it in less than a day. Plenty of folks around here need a real medical supplies. Alright, I told you what I know, so we're cool, right? I don't know anything else. Oh, jeez. Okay, yeah, chill. Chill, dude. You, you're not gonna hurt me, man? Thanks, dude. Not everyone's so understanding around here. Look, if you're looking for the Robin Gaster, Try the old information kiosk. I've seen some people coming and going through there. Yeah, we already kind of know that, though. What about you? Guten Tag. Um... Say, so, what's up with those scuff marks? I wouldn't know. I'm not in charge of cleaning around here. Hell, nobody is these days. The way things have been going, hopefully our luck will turn, sooner or later. It'd be nice to take some pride in this place again. Uh, I do know you're hiding something, lady. Ooh, is this a bad move? Fine, I don't know who you are or what you're doing snooping around down here. You'd better come with me now. Our leader's going to want to speak to you. Who's leader? Come on. Of the Rabbingeister. It's clear you know that much by now. What makes you think I'll come? Look, I don't want to do this any more than you do. But we're not going to let you keep sniffing around here. If you come with me, I guarantee nobody's going to stab you in the back. We'll shoot you in the front. I'll bring you safely to see the Rabbingeister. It's a smart decision. This is the same man you met in the market. But the friendliness has gone from his face. And his place is a cold, unwavering gaze. I don't remember what he sounded like. You should have stuck to the market, stranger. If the Robin Gester wished to be found, we'd open a fucking cafe. Now what do you want of us? Say your piece. Hmm. Uh, yeah, we do want our supplies back. Guess we were a little careless on that one. I figured with Monica Schaefer gone, the KP would be an easy score. So that's why you're here? We stole your supplies, now you want them back? Pretty much. <sighs> Look, I completely understand that, stranger. Believe me. But unfortunately, we need those supplies more than you do. So I'll have to graciously decline your offer to relieve us of your property. <sighs> yeah, things do look hard down here. But, like, you can't just steal from people, dude. Oof. Look, there's no need for bloodshed. I'll tell you what. 
It seems like you know what it's like to look out for a keys like this. It's not easy, right? We provide for these people. A hole like that shipment keeps Gesundbrunnen from going hungry just a little while longer. It's our home. These are our people. I suspect you, I suspect you feel the same about the KB. So I'm prepared to let you leave, just like that, knowing our little secret here and everything. In return, all you need to do is walk away. Just walk away and forget this ever happened. What do you think, stranger? Who? Yeah, maybe we can come up with like a, an arrangement that could benefit both of us. I'm listening. Oh, sucks I'm not Decker. You return our supplies and we send you a shipment of extra rations in exchange. We agree to a truce of sorts. I see. That's an interesting offer, friend. The rations alone probably don't match the price of the weapons, but food is in short supply around here. And this alliance, what do you propose? Uh, we agree to stay out of each other's way, and maybe we find opportunities to help each other out. You know, in the future. Very vague. <laughs> Very well. I suppose that's worth the price of a crate of guns. Your medical supplies are already mostly gone, I'm afraid. But the weapon shipment's still being held in a locker at Frankfurter Tor. I'll have it sent back... I'll have it sent back to the KB immediately. Okay. And you'll deliver those rations. Take the tunnel to the KB and talk to Paul Amsel. He runs an import-export shop not far from the U-Bahn station. Tell him I sent you, and he'll take care of the rest. Very well. Maybe things are looking up around here, I suppose. Friends and enemies both can be found in strange ways here in the Flux. Cool. We did it. It's kind of a swanky place. cool with me exploring? I hope. Oh man, there's Cyberdeck just sitting there. Yeah, want a beer? Sure. So I have three drinks now in my inventory. Cheap booze, Turkish coffee, and a cold one. I have no idea when I will ever need these things. Sweet. Let's get out of here. Oh, do we want that shoddy pistol? Do we want to sell literally everything else that we have for it? Can I even use it? Let me let me look at it. What, what, it wasn't skill requirement. Slap dash pistol, sorry, not shoddy. It's range combat too. We don't have enough range combat to even use it. Wait, we only have two range combat? Ugh. Maybe I should just sell that smart smart link gun I have then. We'll never be able to use it. Oh well. Best thing that we could use is this. A cheap common pistol. Let's 
submachine gun. Um, hmm. It's a smart link. Yeah, we could just pick that up. That way when we get our third inventory slot, assuming that we will, um, we'll have something to put there, because I'm only going to take two drones. Sure. Let's get out of here. How do I? Okay. Oh, I can talk to the work guard. Is he still parched? Yeah, here's a beer, dude. Do I, do I get anything for that? Okay, I got a karma. I don't know if that was worth it, but... Whatever. Go get another cold one. Yeah, let's just go. A bit of hair sticking up. You emerge from the U-Bahn station and out into the familiar streets of the cruise bar. The energy here is a stark contrast to the weary, slowly drowning mood of Gesundbrunnen. The Kreuzberg is an island of hope, afloat amidst, still amidst the dangerous currents of the flux state. But it wouldn't take much for it to capsize. It's time to find Gunari and tell him the news. Cool. Well, we got some of the shipment back. So that's something. Um, yeah, took care of the business with the Robin Gaster. They won't be hijacking your shipments. Yes, this much I know already. The missing shipment arrived just before you did. Though I barely caught a glimpse of those who delivered it. How were you able to manage that? I uh, just made an arrangement. And you've accomplished all this through diplomacy. Interesting. It is... Well, it is not what I would have done. But perhaps that is for the best. Here's your payment. And should you need any new weapons, I have some new merchandise available. Um, jeez, that's some good stuff that I can't use. So I don't really care. So let's take Glory to go get the docks supplies now. Actually, is there anything that I do need? And to spend these karma? Type S drone. Oh, I didn't spend it. Type S drones. Gimme. Can we buy a class S drone? I mean, we don't have enough money for it, surely, but. Does she sell them now? Drones, drones, drones. Snow sheet doesn't sell class S drones. Are my drones currently? What, what are they? 
Yeah, they're both class A. Need those hot S class drones. Well, we did a little bit of a mission, so let's see if we have some new new dialogues. Got nothing more to say, boss. Let's just get this run taken care of. Okay. What about you, Ag? This isn't the best of times, still. Yeah, how are things, Glory? You know what? I'm happy, actually. For the first time in a long time. I have you to thank for that. Okay, I'm patient, I'm patient. Just checking in. Okay, so we probably won't get that till we do our next, like, real run. Let's pet the doggy. Hey, pupper! And we'll go on an adventure. Sit. Play dead. Aww. Here, here's another pet. I'm going on a train now, though, friend. Let's find the lab. Come on, Glory. Oh, we can take, like, a full party for this. Okay. Yeah, this works, I think. A ride to the a dinner plots is a dismal one. Your only company on the train is an elderly dwarf in a ragged peacoat, and he spends most of his time muttering to himself. When the train rattles to a stop, he slowly rises from his perch and begins to hobble toward the doorway. The station itself isn't much different, an old broken-down thing at the end of its useful life, feebly tottering towards obsolescence. This area of Berlin has clearly seen better days. A window of light shines down from the surface, and even that looks stale. Slowly, you begin to climb. Um, yeah, that inventory looks pretty good. The streets above the dinner plots are dark and dismal. This key is to seen better days. Everything here reeks of economic depression and faded glory. Looming above you is a fortress, a fortress-like, seemingly impregnable facility. The windows have been shuttered with enormous steel panels, lending the entire building a sinister appearance. That's our target, Sutherland Bioscience. I wonder what happened in there. Might still be happening. Well, that's a cheerful thought. Come on, Chief, let's get this over with. <coughs> let's take a look around first. Sutherland Bioscience. Discarded tires. A pile of trash is steaming. Fetid waves of stench wash over you as you draw near. Goddamn, that's rank. I'll stay back here if you don't mind. I have better things to do than dig through a pile of trash. It might not be decomposition. That steam could be coming from a grate or vent under the pile. 
Yeah, well, I ain't touching it. Aha, uh -huh, it is a vent. The garbage pile was concealing a small HVAC vent. The steam that pours from it smells much cleaner now that it isn't being filtered through a heap of filth. A dwarf might be able to fit inside the vent, but nothing larger. Ooh, okay, I'll send in a drone later. Let's keep looking. Maybe we can shove that elderly dwarf through there. Why is the music so loud for us? Oh hey, Blitz, jack into this. Find out what happened. Okay, so there's some enemies already. Medic erosion. Oh no, lots of stuff in here. Okay, so we can't erode it. Front door. Let's take out this thing. Oh. Probably going to have to loop around to that side, so. Nice. Uh, so we'll face those two later. I mean, we could try and take them out from here, but. You know, sure. Let's do it. Make our lives easier later. Oh, yes, we can blast them now. AoE. Um. Blaster. Road. Nice. Okay, and this is the other side. Open the door, boy. That was easy. Glad we brought him. Get out of here. Good job, man. Can I talk to these guys? I didn't even notice. No. So I'm going to send my drone into this vent to just take a, a quick peek around before we all hop in. Oh no, can I not do that anymore? Oh, is it because we opened the door? 
Well, darn. Uh, so this place going to be like infected with a virus or something? Let's save. Let's have a game, please. Two choices. Let's go over here. Okay, we have a window we can look through into the observation room. Animal testing wing. Ooh. Hellhound testing and basilisk testing. This entry contains notes on a variety of invasive test procedures that were performed on a kennel of hellhound test subjects. There are several memos appended to the file. Apparently, the scientists working in the animal testing wing were less convinced that working with dangerous, fire-breathing animals would yield useful results than the executives were. This entry covers the various forms of experimentation and per testing performed on Southern's prized possession, a rare albino basilisk acquired from an exotic animal stealer in Portugal. It appears that the basilisk was being used as the primary focus of a passion project here at Sutherland, an attempt to create a magically active piece of bioware. Why the executives in charge of the project felt that a basilisk would make an appropriate test subject is not clarified. The list of procedures performed on the creature is extensive, including a series of unanesthetized thoracic surgeries. Okay, so there's a pissed off, magically enhanced basilisk. Sweet. Everything I've always wanted. The terminal appears to contain an inventory control system for Southern Biosciences merchandise. The items are spelled out in amber lettering against a solid black background. A glowing cursor awaits your input. Uh, org chem wing, tissue banks, organ farm, breakdown and analysis, replication and fabrication, executive wing, animal testing wing. So yeah, tell me about these special projects again. Testing on awakened animals. This one's for a number of hellhounds, including their complete medical histories. A subject named Billy. So Billy is the basilisk. The basilisk is named Billy. He's Billy Basilisk. A number of high-end security level enhancements in inventory. Bioware like this would normally run for tens of thousands of million. Jeez. Yeah, we, we need a Billy Basilisk gate, Alex, you're right. <laughs> this entry contains a complete log of stage performed. Okay. Sweet. Uh, let's save again. So if that other wing is the animal testing wing, then hopefully this is just like the org chem wing and it's safe. I don't want to fight Basilisk yet. Oh, both, both sides actually just led into this room, so I'm not sure what about the wings. A Capri Sun! Why? So there's an ominous ladder we can climb down. Executive clearance panel, keycard panel. Clearance B panel. Uh, so is this maintenance wing? Okay, what is this? I can't read this sign. Um, the console seems to control the locking mechanism of the door in front of you. The keycard Keycard access, clearance level B. So 
on Alex Mack, Billy Basilisk. I agree. Okay, maybe we can get a blitz to hack that later. Executive clearance. Oh no! Uh, so I, do you have a Sean? Anyone? No, you don't. It's really hard to hit these things. Are we just out of our league fighting these? Can you please take out this thing? Heck yeah. Oh, really? You miss with everything. There's a, a person here? This place has been sealed up for like two years. A wild eyed young man in a tattered lab coat confronts you. His beard is bushy and unkempt, but bare patches of skin show through. You there, who are you? How dare you enter my domain? Um. 
Yeah, easy there. I thought this lab was abandoned. Abandoned? This is my territory, my home. You're an invader in my territory, Elfling, and you've murdered my peasantry. You're a murderer, a monster. You'll pay. I I'm Philip Rex, the Night King of Sutherland Bioscience. I'll have you banished for your transgressions, Elfling. Banished to the underworld and left to the ravages of the all-powerful Billy. Hold still while I fetch the robots that will banish you. <coughs> um. Yeah, you're, it was self-defense. Your peasants attacked me. No, they wouldn't do that. They were gentle and kind. You're an outsider. You don't understand the bond of trust and respect that we shared. I did my best to make life good for the peasantry. I scrubbed their plastic cases on a daily basis, and I crooned pleasing melodies to ease their troubled minds. But those days are over now. My peasants are dead. You destroyed something beautiful. All right, sire. I'm sorry about your peasants, but I'm on an important quest. Oh, well that changes everything. Perilous quests and civilian casualties go together like chocolate and peanut butter. I can't stay mad at you for that. Tell me about this quest of yours, good elfling. Leave nothing to the imagination. You've my rapt attention. I need to get my hands on the Bioware prototypes. They're being stored in the executive wing. The executive wing? Madness. Take this as a warning, noble stranger. If you intend to forge your way into that land of milk and honey, you do so at your own peril. The underworld stands between you and your goal, and the underworld is home to the murderous Billy. I think I've read about this Billy. He was Sutherland's albino basilisk, right? Was is right. Now he is so much more. A creature of legend. Years of experimentation have remade the beast into the ultimate killing machine. He's smarter than ten men and five times as deadly. Whew. I will have to slay the beast known as Billy. A fool's errand. Heiner tried to kill Billy once. He thought that by eating the beast, we could steal its power. Hubris. Billy devoured my friend for his insolence, and the last remaining copy of Keycard E was lost. He was a beautiful fool, that Heiner. I told him that we didn't need to eat Billy, that we could survive indefinitely on synthesized cardiac tissue and choco nubs. But he wouldn't listen and Keycard E was lost, and without it I can no longer access the executive wing and its expansive snack bar. I've eaten nothing but vat-grown metahuman organs for a year and a half, stranger. I would kill for a choco nub. Very well, stranger. If you cannot be dissuaded, I will help you. This is my most prized possession, the incomparable Keycard B. Using this, you can descend to the underworld and face Billy. If you should survive the encounter, search for the long-missing Keycard E. Use it to reopen the executive wing, and I will see to it that you are richly rewarded with Choco Nubs. Uh, most likely. What is this? Um, I'm gonna save here in case there are robots behind the store. I don't want to kill more of this peasantry. Are they going to attack me or are they friendly now? Okay, cool. Oh, 
Okay, this was a good surveillance terminal. Okay. Hopefully it works. Uh, search the video archive. Paging through the computer's file system, you find a number of archived video feeds from the building surveillance system. In addition, episodes 1 through 6 of an old Slovakian period fantasy series called Night Kings of Lightning Fold have been saved to the machine's desktop. I remember that show. It was horrible. I mean, really, really bad. Made Neil the Orc Barbarian look like high art. Me and my buddies in the Sorcha Herzen used to get high and laugh at it. It only ran for seven episodes before it got pulled. According to the computer's file system, each of the six episodes has been viewed over 400 times in the past two years. The last marathon viewing was this morning. As the video feed kicks in, Philip is engaged in an animated discussion with someone who's standing just outside the camera range. You can see his shoes and his shadow, but nothing more. The voice sounds human. You'd guess that the off-camera speaker is a man in his early 20s. Look, we've survived this song. If we play our cards right and do a proper bit of rationing, I reckon that we can live off the executive snack bar for a long time to come. We'll have plenty of fat and sugar. Those won't be a problem. We've got mixed nuts for protein and we can get our vitamins and minerals from diet bars. There aren't many of those, but like I said, we'll ration. I'd be willing to bet we can hold out for two to three months on what's stashed away in that snack bar. We're sure to be rescued before we run dry. You're fooling yourself, man. Ignoring an unpleasant truth rather than facing it. We have to accept the fact that we could be stuck in here for the long haul. The snacks are great and all, but they can't be our staple food stuff. We need to stretch them out as far as humanly possible, and that means supplementing them with something more substantial. You don't mean... Look, just think of it like farming, right? If we look after our crops, we'll always have food to eat. We have enough supplies on hand to keep the tissue cultures and the org chem wing growing indefinitely. What I'm talking about is growing meat for our own survival. That's all it is. Metahuman meat, Phil. Synthetic hearts and livers and kidneys. Grown to be implanted into people like you and me. You're talking about eating people parts. It's fucking disgusting. I won't do it. Unless you fancy dying of malnutrition, you're gonna have to. You know that as well as I do. Organ meats are rich in vitamins and minerals. Choline, CoQ10, and vitamin D. Bioavailable iron all things that we're going to need if we want to survive in the long term. You won't find much vitamin D in licorice sticks and choco nubs. You're talking like they're never going to rescue us, Phil. We're in Berlin, Heiner. What they? Who do you think's coming? We need to be prepared to survive here for a long time, maybe years, and that means making the most of the resources at our disposal. <coughs> You're talking about resorting to cannibalism, man. No, I'm talking about eating meat. An image flickers in the frame. Philip, leaning against a wall, listlessly chewing on an unidentifiable hunk of cooked meat. He looks miserable. A drone comes to inspect him, and he pushes it away. I'm going now, Phil. No more arguments, okay? I'll kill that fucking thing, you'll see. That goddamn basilisk is going down. Once we can get down to the sewers again, we might be able to find a way out. This is our chance, Phil. Wish me luck. Hmm. Oh. So Phil is just watching Night Kings of Lightningford. Awesome. Night Kings of Lightning Hold! Ooh. I, Titonius Rex, will defend my realm. I do so swear it before my magic sword, Argonar. This I do swear. But Titonius, the Jubathon hordes will smite you if you stay. The people in that valley are only peasants. You needn't throw your life away for them. Flee 
with me into the enchanted wood of Trollachin. <laughs> this is awful. My life is sworn to protect those peasants, she-elf. Run back to your enchanted trees, if you will, but a Night King will never flee. But Titonius, you cannot die. I love you. Then go to your father and beseech him to rally his elf troops southward. For if Titonius Rex falls, Lightning Hold will fall, and Lightning Hold will not fall. Sweet. The troll drones on, audibly struggling to emote and occasionally tripping over his lines. Overall, the acting quality is roughly on par with what you'd expect from a primary school Christmas pageant. Philip stares at the screen, listlessly chewing his meat. His nose is wrinkled in distaste, and his fists clench and unclench. Oof. So that was 14 months ago. Jeez, or was it 11 months ago? I don't remember. Okay, and he's still just watching it. But father, Titonius Rex is risking his life, nay, his very soul, to defend Lightning Hold from the Jubathons. His enchanted sword, Argonar, feeds off his honor and bravery, and seeks to transform him from a noble Night King into an evil Demon Lord. Philip's lips move silently, mouthing the words as they are spoken. Evidently, he has committed the entire script to memory. My darling daughter, that is why I cannot send my troops. Your beloved Titonius Rex walks the knife's edge between light and darkness every time he draws that devil blade from its scabbard. It's long past time that you learn the truth about me, Branathe. I was the one who trapped the demon lord Karabork within that blade. But father, you can't mean... Yes, my daughter. I was the one they called Thunder Spear, the sworn enemy of Titonius Rex's people, the Honga Barbarian tribe. Then all of this is your fault. The Jubathons, the threat to my beloved soul. All of it. It was the only way to save Trollachin, my darling daughter. Trollachin and your mother, whom I hid away when you were but a girl. She's still alive, Brennethe. So this is today's video feed. Lights go dim. Okay, so this is us breaking in. Philip Rex. Okay, so he's Philip Rex. There. Okay. Walk away. Maybe we can convince him to go fight the basilisk himself with us or something. What's up, Phil? Tell me more about the Underworld. The nether realm that lies beneath the hallowed halls of Sutherland Bioscience. A nightmarish labyrinth of dripping pipes and filthy brickwork. Billy rules supreme down there now. To set foot into the Underworld means certain death. It's just the sewer, right? Yes, it is a sewer. But it's also a nightmarish labyrinth of... Okay. Now uh, what happened? A calamitous series of events that began with a spilled cup of soy calf and ended in terror and blood. Uh, so someone spilled soy calf. Well, no. Naturally, the inevitable results of such an incident followed the spill. Ah. Uh. 
On the morning of the lockdown, all was well. Giesler, an executive, was making his rounds, walking from console to console to check up on us. He held a bubbling cup of soy calf in his stubby little hands. We all knew that food and drink were forbidden outside of the company lounge. But Giesler was a proud man, and he would not obey the rules. His pride was our undoing. He tripped and fell, and his soy calf spilled into a console in the animal testing wing. There was a terrible snap of shorting circuits, coupled with the stench of ozone. All over the building, emergency lights flashed and alarms blared. The building went into quarantine mode. Doors locked and shutters slammed closed. We were all trapped like rats. But we were not afraid. We were sure that the malfunction would be fixed within the hour. We did not know what was coming for us. Unbeknownst to any of us, Giesler's devil beverage had none more than had done more than initiate a false quarantine. It had also the shorted the locks on Billy's cage. The albino basilisk slipped its bonds, and in that moment its reign of terror began. Within a half hour of the spill, Billy had slaughtered everyone who could have disengaged the lockdown. Executives were torn limb from limb, their business attire shredded. Their expenditure reports bathed in blood. The rest of us were trapped inside with the savage beast. In the end, only Heiner and I remained. We managed to trap Billy in the underworld, but there was no hope of escape for us. Hmm. Just call for help? No, comlinks don't work in here, no reception, and the quarantine cut off our matrix access. Heiner and I found ourselves completely isolated from the outside world, with a terrible creature running loose in the basement. Our choices were to give up and die, or to make the best of it. And as you can plainly see, we chose the latter. We persevered, and eventually transformed this husk of a building into the glorious kingdom you find yourself standing in today. It was all for the best in the end. I tamed this land and have grown to love it. I will never live anywhere else. Um, you're really into that show. It is my life. My entire life. My reason for being it. You're saying there's more? Yeah, the last episode before it got cancelled, you know. The hastily written final chapter, where you find out what happens with the Jubathon invasion. I had always thought they'd have left the ending to the imagination, like a beautiful dream. But now the dream is over. I will never know peace until I've seen this conclusion for myself. You must help me. You must find a way to show me the final episode. I need it. I'm willing to bet I could do that, Chief. This guy might not know how to disengage the quarantine, but I'll bet I can. Once we've reestablished the Bill's Matrix connection, it'll be no big deal for me to download the last episode for him to watch. If nothing else, it'll keep him occupied for a while. Sure. Sure thing, Chief. The terminals of this building are all networked together, so I should be able to drop the quarantine from any computer in the place. Oh, thank you, thank you. This is the happiest day of my life. Sweet. Okay. So we have more ladders down. Those all lead into the sewer. Let's save. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, great. 
does lead to the sewer. Yeah, let's go right back up. The console seems to. Okay, we have clearance. Why, the... Why did we need that though? Okay, so this is a stash. Like, is that ladder down any different than the others? Like, where does this one go down? He does have to watch that final episode. We have to hurry and get it to him. Okay, so we have a clearance B panel that should get us to the basilisk. Does that mean that this part is free from the basilisk? So we can just explore. Okay, so that's where one of the other ways up goes. What's this? $63, so New Year. I cannot rest to see the finale of my favorite TV show. It is my life. I'm trying to be a little bit quieter right now because I hear Alex behind me talking. He's, uh, I think, in voice chat right now. Swipe. Swiper, no swiping. Let's save again. There's Billy. We found Billy. Oh, and he's friends with the Hellhounds? Petrify glory. Oh, okay, all it does is take my AP. That's not that bad. Okay. Uh, Iger, you gotta go in, I think. Oh. 
碎了。Concussion. <coughs> Can't petrify a drone. We killed Billy! Billy the Basilisk is no more. Either, to be honest. So she can just get point blank. Uh, take him out. Sweet. Hey, Max, come help me. Jokes on you, I have no AP to lose. Go get that key card. So where did that other ladder go down then? Because we know where this ladder and this ladder go down, but not this one. Or this I didn't see where it went down. Oh, nice. 
explosive chirps. What is it? Oh, a bliss auto injector. I don't want that. Okay. We have the executive key card. Let us open the door to this land of milk and honey. Oh, is it gonna be filled with hellhounds? Gates, they finally opened! Yeah, hey, Phil. Phil, don't run ahead of us! Can't get yourself killed, dude. Thank you, my friend. You've granted me the secret desire that my heart yearned for most a respectable supply of non organ based foods. You'll always be welcome in these hallowed halls. I, Philip Rex, do so swear. My only remaining wish is to know the ending to the tale of the noble Titonius Rex and his beautiful Brenafe. Who knows, perhaps one day my prayers will be answered. Yeah, we told you we are going to give you the episode, dude. Oh my god. Can we use either of these computers? Let's well, just said you needed any terminal, right? Huh, maybe we have to grab this first. Experimental Bioware. Use a terminal to disengage quarantine. I don't understand, where's the terminal? Um... Oh, I guess there were terminals over here. Could I have just used used this terminal? Okay. All right, Chief, watch me work. Blitz plugs the cyberdeck into the terminal and punches the escape key with a flourish. A second later, he hits the Y key. And the building lights flicker. Wow. Nope, that's it. It's okay. How does it end? Too bad, because I'm telling you anyways. Titonius Rex and his elf Sweetie's dad makes up. A bunch of elves fight the Jubathons and get their asses kicked. And the whole Karabork the Demon Lord subplot is dropped because the show's effect budget got cut. In the end, Titonius saves Lightning Hold by rallying a peasant revolt. It comes out of nowhere, barely makes sense, and the whole thing ends in a vomit-inducing love scene. It's a goddamn train wreck. Let's see how Phil liked it. Phil, my boy, did you love it? Ah, the intrepid elfling returns. What can I do for you? The yes, peace will be known and brought to the land. Oh, let's let's follow him. Let's see his reaction to the finale. Will he lead a peasant revolt? You, you've given me everything. My whole heart's desire. The hidden knowledge of Titonius Rex's victory is mine, and I will be a better ruler for it. And also I have sugary snacks. I have it all, and thanks to you, noble elfling, all thanks to you. Don't you forget it, buddy. Spoken like a true hero. Farewell, my friend. Perhaps one day I'll be able to come to your aid in return. Thank you, noble sir. Sweet. I hope that that actually does have a payoff. Maybe... He was just like a random message from him. Oh, it probably will just be an email from him, won't it? 
Well, I think once we get back to the KB, I'm going to call it a day. So we got some jobs done, but we didn't actually really earn any uh, Nuyen. What? A man in an expensive suit raises a megaphone to shout at you. You! Stay right where you are! Um, yeah, do you need a megaphone? I'm right here. You will place the stolen Bioware samples that you're carrying on the ground. Then lie on your belly with your hands on your head. Do it now, or I'll order my men to open fire. Um, yeah, I don't think so. You don't own it. Yeah, the dock. We're with Shiawase, street scum. And that material infringes on 15 of our company's patents. The organs that you're carrying are based on our intellectual property. Oh. Really? You come today? You think that's a coincidence? We came when the quarantine was broken. We've had eyes on this place since the lockdown went into effect. You called us here when you opened the doors. What? Yeah, why'd you wait? The building was quarantined, idiot. It's cheaper to set up a camera than it is to mount a hazmat cleanup effort. As long as that counterfeit merchandise was contained, we didn't care that it was there. But we will not hit but it will not hit the streets. Now shut your mouth and hit the floor. Or I'll order my men to open fire. Um, no? Open fire. Oh. Oh no, is he gonna get himself killed? Coming out here to try and help us with his robot drones? Please tell me it's just the drones that he's sending. You will not threaten this man, Jubathon Dog! The fuck? Too long have my people lived in fear of your aggression. I, Philip Rex, will protect this land from your mongrel deprivations. You two, enter the building. Find whoever's on that intercom and silence it. Yes, sir. As for you. Peasants, arise to defend your home. You need only believe in yourselves. The power is yours. Oh. Okay, so we have the peasants. Oh, God, and we have the music. Let's try and keep as many peasants alive as we can, I guess. Probably gonna need healing. Uh, so what do I have? I have a mage, quarantine technician, enforcer, conjurer, grenadier. Grenadier. That's bad news. Get behind this cover, Iger. Well, that was something. Let's make sure he can't throw a grenade. <clears throat> Blitz. Hang out here. Send your drone in. Your drone sucks, man. Oh, 
Really? She has grenades too? Glory and take out that conjurer. helping me. Did she lose control of it immediately? Sure. Uh, no point in eviscerating. Just normal attack. Okay, Agar. Can you do anything for me? No, you're in like a horrible position where you're not close enough to use a shotgun and not far enough away to use your sniper rifle. Sure, go here. I'm gonna shotgun that guy in the face, please. <laughs> Great. Let's get adjacent to this person. Ow. Please don't kill me. Probably hear yourself, Jack, but whatever. Oh, they're all bundled up? Mmm, that's perfect. Okay. Oh, I forgot about this one. <clears throat> uh, Glory, can you get to that one? Are they armored? No. Uh, Blitz, what can you do? <laughs> Wait, is... was Max destroyed? What happened to... Blitz's drone? <laughs> oh. That's no good. Can you pull this off right here? Yes, thank you. You're amazing. Gloria, kill this mage, please. Twin fury swipes on... on them. As the smoke begins to clear, a cry of jubilation sounds out over the Sutherland Bioscience Building's intercom system. We've done it! We've done it, my friends! The Jubathon hordes have been defeated! With this great victory, I declare my new age of exploration and commerce. My peasants will form trade agreements with our neighboring kingdoms for the betterment of all. Yeah, I hope that works out for you. Farewell, stalwart elfling. I we will remember you always. Great. 
We did it! So hopefully because it's like Blitz's special drone, it's not actually destroyed. The Yuban trick trip back from the Adenau plots is a shaky one. Surprisingly, the train is packed. The only empty seats are at the very back of the car. A haggard-looking young mother marches down the aisle, dragging her three screaming children behind her. Two boys and a girl, each around six years old. As the woman nears you, her eyes fix on the frozen pouches of bioengineered meat that you liberated from Sutherland's executive freezer. She opens her mouth to say something, but at that moment, the little girl jams a finger into her brother's nose. The boy howls, and the young mother's shoulders sh slump. Slowly, robotically, she turns back towards her just destination and begins to trundle forward, dragging her squalling offspring to forward with the solemnity of a funeral procession. procession. Eventually, the train hums to a stop, and you debark gratefully, lugging a freezer's worth of Bioware samples behind you. Cool, I'm going to deliver these to the doctor and then get off. back. Do you have my merchandise? I do. So you do? Yes, yes. This is exactly what I've been waiting for. Good work, Jack. As per agreement, there will be no monetary compensation for this run. But if you'll give me a moment, I will add the samples that you've recovered to my inventory. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. And now if you'll excuse me. Uh, yeah, show me the goods. Oh yeah, I found the schematic. Interesting, these types of implanted injectors have become popular with some of the local gangs. Yes, I can install it, though I will still need payment for the materials. Uh, first, show me what meds you have. Okay, those suck. Show me what cyberware. Uh, do you have anything better for the head? Nope. Grants a close range poison attack. What? That's pretty cool sounding. Are there better eyes? No. What about body? Platelet factory. Okay. That Bliss auto injector sounds pretty cool. Yeah, this is the stuff I want. We'll save up. Maybe eventually we'll be able to kit ourselves out with all the, the latest, coolest stuff.
Oh yeah, so I was gonna get off. Okay, I can't save for some reason. Is it because I was in the middle of walking? I'll save that. Uh, yes, override. Thanks for chilling with me. Have a happy rest of your Saturday. And um, later. Peace out. I'm going to go get lunch.